Find this holy word. Always a blessing to see the family's face, you know. Elisha Ben Israel. The house of Elisha Ben Israel is in the building. Uh, pray, uh, bro. You wanna, uh, you wanna mind coming up read a little bit? Right on, brother. Heavenly appreciate it. Shalom, family. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I'll pray. I'll pray. All right, we got a, a few Hebrews on assignment, so you know it may look a little short today. It's all good, though. We still going to throw down this holy oracles. Yeah, the little Hebrews going on assignment, you know. <laughs> it's usually back up here. We got a few Hebrews handling some business. Some, some accomplishments, but you know how you say it? Some, some, you know, handling some business. So it's all good. We're going to throw down, uh, we're going to go more into uh, the kingdom of heaven as a state of mind. Uh, not just a physical place, but a state of mind. We went over it a little bit a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is part two to that. But before we get started, anybody got any questions? Something you may have heard, something bothered your spirit during the week? What was y'all last weekend? We, we was out camping in the woods last weekend uh, for the Feast right. of Tabernacles. So if you came out here, we wasn't hurt. That's what we was. Right. We, did, we didn't take off and say, well, we just tired of preaching the word, so. <laughs> you know. I just need a break. Shalom, family. I just need a break. No, no, no. We, we uh, kept the feast of tabernacle. All right. Short legger class. Any of y'all short leggers? Uncle Uriel, hold your hand up, brother. That's the house of Uriel right there. Y'all follow that Hebrew? On back. Y'all can get broke off in some understanding. But yeah, we was camping last week. Y'all came out here and didn't find us. All right, but other than that, any questions? Anybody got any questions? Anything on their mind? Go ahead, my bro. Oh, it's about 4 30. It goes into uh, how long we was there. From the time that uh, Joseph got there, all the way into the time that we left. 430. Now, the question needed to be how long was we afflicted? You feel me? How long were we afflicted? Well, the whole time we was there, we wasn't afflicted. As long as Joseph was living, and Joseph raised his great-great-grandchildren, or great-grandchildren on his knee, you know what I'm saying? So he was there a total of 430 years, you feel me? But the whole time he wasn't enslaved. Remember, Pharaoh rose up and didn't know Joseph, so it was a regime change, you feel me? All the Pharaohs weren't related. You got different families, took the thrones and all that, and, you know, said, you know, we gonna get at these Hebrews. That's what happened, you feel me? She got, she got something to hear with um, I know we're supposed to keep the laws and the commandments, but what about, you know, I hear everyone saying about um, the Sabbath and everything, yeah. respecting and keeping the Sabbath, but what about the scripture that says um, man was not made for the Sabbath, but yeah. the Sabbath for man? Could you explain that? Yeah, we go to Matthew 12, man, I'm ready for Matthew 12. Excellent question. Uh, big topic of debate amongst Hebrews, you know, the, the Sabbath. Some Hebrews tell you, you can't cut your furnace on. You know what I'm saying? You can't breathe too hard. Don't put it out the window. Uh, it's the Sabbath, dog. Mama broke down on the side of the highway. Big mama, you, you stuck to the sun go down. It's the Sabbath, dog. You understand? So uh, down here, we believe in the entire book from cover to cover. And uh, uh, our master teacher is the Messiah. The word of the Most High made flesh, you understand? So he gave us a complete, perfect understanding of what it is. And you gotta be careful because you get into a lot of hypocrisy concerning the Sabbath. Like, they was mad at the Messiah for healing, making me in whole on Shabbat day. Right. And he's like, well, y'all circumcised me on the Sabbath day. Like, you feel me? You cut me in and they bleed on the Sabbath, but he can't be made whole on the Sabbath day. <laughs> you understand? So, uh, it's lawful to do good works. But you got to be balanced too. You don't be like, well, that's the Sabbath, so I'm breaking every law concerning the Sabbath day. There are certain things that come up, emergencies come up. You understand? Uh, what we just talking about, Big Mama maybe broke down on the side of the highway. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees would get their, their mule about the hole or whatever. That's work, ain't it? You ain't going to be doing no work, dog. You see? Mm -hmm. so, so there's balance to it as well. Uh, you're not supposed to be working and kindling a fire. So to the best of your ability, prep your food. Feel me? We got food, get the food Friday night before the sun go down. That food to be down here for Friday night. 
When y'all get in here, grab your grapes, your lunch meat, do all that, right? But like third things happen, it's almost got little babies. Everything right. is about preparing for the end time That's right. when Christ comes back. That's right. So, and likewise, he says, don't go back into the house for anything. So you have to be prepared to, with a mindset to be prepared to go. If he shows up right now, I'm prepared to go. I ain't cooking. I ain't waiting for this meal to get done to feed my, my shorties and things of this nature. If you can do it. Okay. But, you know, a lot of people take liberty to just profane the, the Sabbath right. because of that scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's get this Matthew 12 and get some understanding on the Sabbath day. <clears throat> Matthew 12 chapter. We're going to read, uh, we're going to read 1 through 13. Mm -hmm. Matthew 12, verse 1. Read 1 through 14. So yeah, the Sabbath is to be honored. It is a commandment to be kept, you know. But how do you go out and keep the Sabbath day? You feel me? Without falling into uh, robot mode or hypocrisy. We real people in real life that experience real things, right? What does the baby need that bottle warmed up? No, oh, baby, you can't get no, you got to drink cold milk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to drink cold milk for the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? Well, that baby need a warm bottle. So you're not gonna cut that stove off. You see, people get real technical mm -hmm. and act like there's something wrong with doing right. Right? Is it wrong or right to feed a baby? Yeah, we were accused of eating uh, cooking chicken on my Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Matthew chapter 12, let's start at verse one. Matthew 12, verse one. At that time, to sure, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger, and began to pluck their ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. What do they mean by that? What was wrong with them plucking corn and eating? They were hungry. Why is that unlawful? Anybody know? Was considered work. Well, getting you something to eat. No, no, I'm just saying that's the way they looked at it. <laughs> yeah, they would have. To, so you, you got this instance where these people are robot mode, super technical with. It. Right. I mean, what what laws being broken? <clears throat> like we was like, chap, give me the precept on what laws being broke. Who could find it? anybody? Go ahead, sister. Maybe pulling the corn off was uh, against the law. They could have all opened it in. And just left it on the Alright, so so now so now our problem is how do we define what's working and what's not? <laughs> that's the that's the problem here. If this labor, they're hungry, and they pull some corn, they start eating. They they being accused of breaking Torah, breaking law. Or are they just going with their own tradition. What you what you got, Super? <laughs> Could it be considered still? Yes. That's that's a good question. Not sure about this. You got in the law where you had you could reap every corner of your field. You had to leave uh, the corners of your field for the poor. Right. So where if they were going through the field and they was hungry, they had by law they could grab it and eat it, and it wouldn't be considered still. So how are they being unlawful right here? Precept, please. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Yeah. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of Yahweh and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful for him to eat, Oof. neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Ah. Uh -huh. So y'all never read about David in the first time in 21? David was hungry. Yeah. Him and his men been at war. They run across the priest, he's like, hey man, we hungry, F feed me and my men. And he's like, look, I don't think we got a showbread up in the hall. That ain't for you, that's for the priest. So what we got here, what is this called? Some type of provision in the law? It's not lawful for the Judites to eat the showbread, that's only for the priests, because they are in the temple officiating before the Most High. But the Most High allowed it to happen. These, his men were hungry. He's fighting the, the war of the Most High. You understand? 
And there, here's a provision right here in the law to where David was allowed to eat showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat. Now, was David considered a sinner because of that? David sinned in his life. We, know, we all know about his sins. That, you know, that pretty broadcast for everybody to understand. Taking Bathsheba, killing Uriah, numbering Israel. You know about David's sins. Why would David eat the showbread a sin? It's not lawful for me. Mm. So there are provisions in the law as well. If there's an emergency, if David, a man of the Lord, his men are hungry, then they can eat the priest's bread then. Mm. What else to say, brother? Verse 5. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath? And are blameless. Oh man, that just really good. What you mean the priest profane the Sabbath and a blank? Who know? What that mean? Go ahead, brother. They're actually doing work for the Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. Fire lighting fire pits and offerings and they actually straight working. They doing stuff that normal Israelite couldn't do, because you gotta still offer sacrifices and all that. So how the priest can profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Right? How David can eat the show bread and this it's not lawful for him to eat it, but he can eat it. What do we have for it? We got provisions in God's law. The Most High is not no tyrant. If there is an emergency and something needs to happen, you got the right or the liberty to do it. It's lawful to do good. You like, oh my God, God gonna strike me down. I just turned the furnace on. Boy, it's 40 below up in this house. <laughs> Turn that furnace on. <laughs> Everybody go. <laughs> you guys, you look like, I was gonna say that's what the church house was teaching. Yeah, and that's how they come uh, bound them through fear, yeah. through that type of fear, like a monstrous fear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Our God is merciful. That's right. That's right. He's very merciful. What else? What else we got? Verse six. Yeah. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Uh. It was the Messiah boasted. Oh, he just was speaking the truth. It's what it is. And this place is one greater than the temple. He's the son of the Almighty. All right, what else to say, Hebrew? But if he had known what this means, mm -hmm. I will have mercy mm -hmm. and not sacrifice. Uh -huh. He would not have condemned the guilty. You see that? I, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Most high is merciful, like Brother just said. You wouldn't be condemning the innocent out here. You gotta watch being what's called sacrilegious, overzealous. It's a whole bunch of Hebrew. We don't that Hebrews, know a few Hebrew words. You feel me? You start looking like helper skelt out there. You be like, man, boy, what did you? Oh, like, what spirit is that? You feel me? Just, just, just a tyrant with it. The Most High is merciful. He got wrath too. He's balanced. So we ought to be balanced as well in our judgment and how we call certain things. Hear them out all the way out when you get to. Clowning like that. You understand? No, that's that's, that's violation. And why wouldn't that violation? Mm -hmm. David ain't showing. Why wouldn't that violation? The priest profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Why ain't that violation? You feel me? Start getting in higher uh, levels of dialogue and description. Shalom, y'all. Shalom. You feel me? Not just basic Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 20. We all know that. Okay, yeah, we need rules. Feel me? But there's levels to this. It'd be time for us to level up in what we know and understand. And then you look up and be arguing over the wrong thing. We don't mean that. All right? Point fingers. You, uh, uh, all right, whatever. What else we got over here, bro? Let's get her done. Verse 8. Yeah. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Yeah, Lord meaning master of the Sabbath day. So this is, you can take this to the bank. This is a correct breakdown of the Sabbath. This is the Son of the Most High. Telling you this is what it is, and he's pulling precepts to, pull, to prove his point. He's like, I'm in the old temple. Y'all ain't never read about David. Y'all ain't never read about these priests. <clears throat> right? What else to say, bro? And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with him. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? <laughs> that they might accuse him. <laughs> accuse him of what? You can't heal somebody on the Sabbath day. So you get these sacrilegious Hebrews to tell you don't move and don't bring you brush your teeth on the Sabbath day. That's work. Huh? Don't throw no gargles, don't throw nothing down in the throat regions. That's work. Y'all gotta watch that. Balance out. You understand? 
you, that's a trap. You get into that type of mindset, you, look, you're a robot at that point. You feel me? You don't have the spirit of the Most High. There's liberty in dealing with, with the Most High. He's merciful. Right? You got the spirit to call what's right and what's wrong. He put it on you. Like, you know what? I shouldn't even be doing this or that. I, I could have prepared for this. But I was what? Like, you feel me? Rolled over and said, I'll get to it later. God just going to have to forget me. You want to watch that spirit too. You don't want to get to the spirit of God just going to have to forgive me. When he gave you plenty of opportunities to do what was right. You feel me? Some people take the liberty for, you know, granted. And be out here clowning on the Shabbat day. All right? Come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. We in Matthew 12, verse 11. Yeah. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Don't you go get your sheep out that hole? If you don't, there's going to be some problems, ain't it? <laughs> that, that sheep stay on there too long, that sheep's dead. So you're going to say, so ain't that work? You finna go <laughs> roll your little garments back? Take off your good garment, <coughs> uh, roll your little garments back, squat down, and do whatever you need to do to get that sheep out that hole. So if Big Mama's broken, broke down on the side of the highway, family member with them blew a tire coming here, your response shouldn't be, well, look, you ought to look at the sun going down and I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't come down. What? Is that the spirit of the most high? No, it is not. It's lawful to do what's right on the Sabbath day, man. I always remember that. And it'll keep you out of robot mode or being overzealous. You understand? Because yeah, you found out the Sabbath day what it was yesterday. Now it's just, you condemning everybody. Like, what's wrong with this brother? <laughs> Calm down. All right, come on, Hebrew. How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wow. Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath. It's lawful. You're not breaking any commandments, doing the right or righteousness on Shabbat day. Even if it come down to healing somebody. All right? Come on, Hebrew. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. This is a miracle. This brother got a withered arm, like a prosthetic arm. Something he can't even... Did a miracle go down, now he has, he has complete use of his arm now. Right. You understand? This went down on the Sabbath day. Now who gonna get mad at this? Well, if that happened up in here right now, we would be praising the most. Like, oh, praise! Mm -hmm. Who gonna have a monkey mouth for this happen right now? <laughs> yeah, I got a problem with some healing no way. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a treacherous spirit to be in. You understand? That's not the spirit you're gonna be in. I uh, hate come on, evil. When the Pharisees went out, then when the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. You see that? Now they huddle up and say, we got to kill this Negro. We got to kill him. Why? Because he did what was right. So that lets you know the spirit of the devil were in the Pharisees, the, the modern day priests, the priests of our uh, nation back then. The spirit of the devil was in them. And they knew law, making up their own laws and their own traditions. You understand? But man, uh, Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath serves you. You feel me? It's there for your rest to recharge your battery. You understand? Get yourself together. It's not to bound you and make you a robot. It's not. That's not what it's about. It's, it's for you so you can rest. You know what I'm saying? Get them men. We catch back up with the world tomorrow. You understand? They don't, the problems don't even exist today. You feel me? We catch back with all that tomorrow. Today is dedicated to the Most High. Good. Or even if it was certain things on your mind, you feel me? You have to ask the Most High forgive you for it. You know, Saturday and all that. You may have woke up angry like myself. Woke up a little angry. Most High, please forgive me. This day is supposed to be dedicated to you and only you. So whatever I'm thinking about ain't got nothing to do with the kingdom. I had to repent of that. Let it go. You feel me? Because this ain't about you. It ain't about I. It's only us. The body of believers. All right, so you get some understanding on it? Really? Uh, I, I, I didn't understand it, but I just keep, kept hearing people say that. Yeah. I'm like, why are they saying that? Yeah, it's like it's like a sacrilegious heap of rules out there. You feel me? That's all it is. Or either the ones that's using the liberty to yes. just justify all the wickedness that they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's either one of the two. That's true. No doubt. Somebody else had a question back up. 
Yeah, my I had a question about the fires in California. Mm -hmm. My friend was saying that uh, she could get some water in She said, she said, what now? She think it's part of the play, the fires in California. Uh -huh. Yeah, them. Yeah, they calling them uh, plagues of biblical proportion. I mean, like, y'all think that's somebody in the middle of the woods with a big life? <laughs> you feel me? Like, that's either of man or that's of the most high. So it, it takes for us to look at a situation and call a spade a spade, you know? I don't believe that somebody was a, with a, some lighter fluid. You feel me? Say the hell in California and start some fire. Now, to me, it don't look like that. I seen a picture on Facebook the other day. It looked like a uh, third world country. Yeah. I was like, whoa! Yeah, it, it was the level of the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about major. And then uh, there's a sister, I think it's in, I forgot, East Bay or wherever that is out in Cali. But uh, the fires are miles. That's enough, the fire's not even right there, but they sent all the children to school with masks on. Mm -hmm. Teachers, and they can't even go outside. Wow. You know I mean? And this ain't even where the fires are at. Right. You understand? So, uh, you know. The most high sending that strong wind. Yeah. yeah. And sweeping yeah. it on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say my friend lives in Central Valley, mm -hmm. and I called her to check on her. She said she had been real sick. Yeah. And she told me that she think that it was from the yeah, fumes and all that. Good be? Well, I've been out there and them, them, that soot and them fumes and all that dust, they go for miles. Yeah. They go for miles. I live five miles away from it, but I could go every day and wipe soot off anything in my house. Mm -hmm. With the windows closed and the doors closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I called her. Hold on. She asked something. I'm coming to you. Go ahead, Mom. Uh, I have a question in Revelation 11 chapter. You know, Oh uh, yeah, that's a, another controversial topic because you got you got folks that say the two witnesses are the nation of Israel, Judah, and the Northern Kingdom. That's a breakdown out there. You feel me? And you got others saying it's Enoch and Elijah. You know what I'm saying? Cause those two men that have died. You understand? So let's go through it, and we gonna see which understanding holds up. <laughs> that's, all, that's, all, that's all we can do. Now, if you remember, some saying it's the house of Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. so let's go to Revelation 11. Hold your question back there, too. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Okay. Revelation 11. Let's go there. Excellent question, Mother. Now, look, another controversial topic. Like, she get asked about the Sabbath. You know, it's all type of breakdowns about who the two witnesses are mm -hmm. in Revelation. Let's go into it. Then there's the other breakdown in which we profess down here is some prophets of the Most High. You feel me? Because there's a point under every man wants to die in the judgment. Those men never die. Then you also must understand also when it says talks about these two witnesses that they'll be killed and the whole world will see them, their bodies laying in the streets yeah. for three days, right? So if it's the nation of Israel, the two kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom, split in half, that are two witnesses. So you're saying all of Israel is going to lay dead for three days in the, in the streets. All of Israel. Yeah. Okay, so what we do is the process of elimination. Which one holds the most water? Yeah. One can't hold water. Right. It's only one truth. Right. Let's get into it. Let's see. Let's see. Is it the southern and northern kingdom? Or are these prophets of the most side that must taste their death? Because they never tasted death. Alright, let's get into it. Revelation the 11th chapter. Revelation chapter 11, let's start at verse 1. Revelation 11 and 1. And that was giving me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Yahweh, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. Mm. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. We got some in the future. It's letting it be known the temple is for the Israelites. 
outside the temple, there's a court. It's a court for Gentiles, a court for other transactions and stuff that go on. But the inside of the temple is for the children of Israel. The court is for the Gentiles. Now this is end time, some type of dispensation going on to where he was like, they gonna, the holy city, they gonna trade on the foot 42 months. All right, so roughly three and a half years, you feel me? We can put that on there or, I mean, what is 42 months biblically? Good question, but look, let's keep reading, let's keep reading. And I will give my power, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, uh -huh. and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. So forty-two months, three and a half years, or a thousand and what you say? A thousand, a thousand two hundred uh -huh. and three score days. So one thousand two hundred and sixty days, mm -hmm. roughly three and a half years, or forty-two months. Now, whoever these witnesses are going to prophesy, and they're going to be wearing. What they Gucci suits? What they gonna wear? Sackcloth. All right. Now this is either the northern and southern kingdom, or these are two witnesses of the Most High, some prophets who have never tasted death that must come and taste their death. One or the other. All right. Now we know they are gonna be in sackcloth for a thousand two hundred and sixty days, prophesying. They not gonna be you know in rap videos. All right, they're not gonna be having fun at the club shooting the breeze. Their whole job is to prophesy against the Antichrist, to prophesy against the kingdom of the beast for 1,260 days. That's their job. In Gucci suits and sackcloth. Okay. And understand sackcloth is a repentance part before Christ came on the scene in the flesh. Yeah. So this is representing that of old, mm. some of, of an ancient. So if Israel is modern at that particular time, contemporary, why they represent some garment of old before Christ? They represent the law of the spiritual nature. Mm. That's the flesh. That's good. Done. Where we at verse four. Mm -hmm. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of earth. And if any man will hurt them, Fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Coach, these whoever these witnesses are got supernatural power. Right. Fire proceeds out of there. Anybody trying to hurt them during their ministry, during their prophesying, gonna be destroyed. Mm -hmm. This is either the southern and northern kingdom. Ain't Israelites out on the corners teaching the word? Is fire coming out of their mouth? Right? Are we being the, uh, are we being slain in the streets as well, ain't we? Mm -hmm. By the police. If any man hurt them, they shall be destroyed. Is this the southern and northern kingdom we talking about it? Or are we talking about two witnesses who have the power, the spiritual power of the most high to destroy their enemies while they're prophesying the sackcloth of 1,260 days? It's one or the other. If you're gonna say it's Israel, then Israel should be displaying this right now. This should be out. All right, let's keep reading, Hebrew. These have power to shut the heaven. Hold on, they got power to who? To shut the heaven. Wow, come on. That it rain not in the days of their promise. Oh, you can kill that out of the rain that we just saw. Right. Who was out? We was out in the woods for the Feast of Tabernacles. They got the point down out there. So these two witnesses got power to shut up heaven. So they don't even rain while they prophesying. Huh? Three and a half years, 42 months. You can call that a drought, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. They rain in three and a half years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got power from the most high to shut the heavens. So it don't rain. Is this Israel? We talking about it. I mean, what conclusion are we coming to? Is this, this is either the north, the north and southern kingdom, or are we talking about some prophets of the Most High with spiritual power? Fire coming out their mouth. Anybody trying to hurt them gets destroyed. Power to shut up heaven so it won't even rain. Right. Let's keep reading. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. Wow. And to smite the earth with all plagues 
as often as they will. As, as often as they want to, they got power to smite the earth with plagues, turn water to blood. Is this Israel? Y'all drinking alkaline water today, ain't you? <laughs> Smart waters and alkaline water, pH balance, 9.5. <laughs> now let's finish, let, let, let's finish, let's finish, hold on, let's finish. So, so, I mean, and brothers know this truth right now. Right? You, if somebody wield this power right now, you think the police will be killing us the way they are? Do you think we would be killing each other the way we are? No. Uh, so, it's, it's this the nation of Israel finding out their Israel, standing on the street corners of America, telling the heathen you're going down. <laughs> if it don't add up, if it don't fit, you can't wear it, right? You gotta keep that, you can't pass it off. It don't fit. Right? At any time in our history, this would be the time for us to be displaying some type of spiritual power. <laughs> you kill another one of us, heathen, you won't get no rain. I'm gonna turn all your water to blood. Huh? Fire issues out our mouth, he trip with us. Right? You got brothers getting locked up on the corners teaching the word now. They riding up like, get your hands on that corner. Turn around, kick you with your feet, your heels over. Right. Violate you. Huh? Throw you head long into the back of that. So is this Israel with this power we talking about? It don't sound like it do. It gets deeper though. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep Verse reading. Seven. Yeah. And when they shall have finished their testimony, uh -huh. the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them mm. and shall overcome them uh -huh. and kill them. Yeah, so after it's over, they have to die. All right, now, bro, if you can grab for me Hebrews uh, 9 27, just real quick. Hebrews 9 27. Hebrews 9 27. Who are the two witnesses? Excellent question. Again, the breakdowns that are online from Israelites is it's, it's the northern and southern kingdom. This is the nation of Israel. Shutting up the heavens, turning water to blood, fire issuing out their mouth. We in the time of us prophesying, brothers prophesying all over the, the, the country right now. You understand? So we should be seeing some type of spiritual power being displayed if this break that if this breaks down to this being the nation of Israel, the two witnesses of the most high. Hebrews 927. Now at the end of their testimony, whoever these two witnesses are, they have to be killed. Right? That's their old mission. Sometimes it ain't an easy job being a prophet of the most high. Think about John the Baptist. He wore, what, a camel jock strap, ate grasshoppers, had, had that fiery message of repentance. And when it was over, what happened to him? Head got cut off. You feel me? Once your job is complete, the mo hey, it's time for you to exit. It just is what it is. You feel me? Isaiah the prophet. Uh, he was sawn in half. They put the women in the law and people saw, saw them in half. That's just, you know, the Messiah crucified, job done. You feel me? So being a prophet of the Most High, obviously, it ain't an easy job. You feel me? And you ain't in it for the likes. Everybody don't like you. You feel me? Your message is seldom a message of good news. Usually it's like, hey, y'all better get that together or else. You understand? Time is a lonely life, you know, you're not socially accepted because everybody's wicked. But you got a job. Tell them where they going off at, right? Serve the most high, tell them I told you to tell them. And when it's over, usually you get mourned. That's just, just the, the, the life, that's this walk right here. When it's over, exit stage left. Lay it down and come on home. You did your job, job's over. <laughs> it's just what it is. You fought a good fight. Hebrews 9 and 27. Let's read this real quick. Are we all there? And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Not twice to die. Once to die. See, so this kills what? Reincarnation, right? A lot of people say you done been here 500 times. <laughs> you don't even know it. You done been here 500 times. Well, that means this scripture is wrong right here. Right? No, your logic and thinking is wrong. You don't got 500 times to get this right. You got one bullet. You, know? you got one shot. Don't miss. You, you spend your time perfecting your aim until you finally squeeze the trigger to hit your target. That put fear in you. That makes you say, let me get this right. 
I don't got 500 times to get this thing. You're not coming, you're, this is not the Highlander, and you're not coming back 500 times. You're not gonna be living for no thousands of years until somebody cuts your head off. This is what it is. You understand? So it's a point under men wants to die. Okay, I'm coming to you, bro. All right, go ahead. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, yeah. but after this, the judgment. Wow. Y'all hear that? It's appointed you once to die, and after that, judgment. You got to get judged off what you didn't did with the spirit the most high loans you. That's, it's a loan. That, that breath you got in your lungs, that's a loan from the most high. He loaned it to you. Why is it a loan? You got to give it back, don't you? So what did you do with it? So we went here to show that's one of the man wants to die in judgment, right? Well, there's two men in this Bible that never tasted death. Enoch, the prophet before the flood. He was translated, Enoch, given the spiritual body, we call it. He was Enoch, taken away from her, never tasted death. And Elijah, the prophet in the book of First Kings. He was caught up in a fiery chair, never tasted death, right? So that's why our understanding is, and you know, you can correct us if we're wrong, but the two witnesses are Enoch and Elijah. And they never tasted death. It's an point under every man wants to die, then what? The judge. So if it's not them, they have to show us in according to the script where they died. They came back and suffered death. It has to be written. There's nothing concealed that is not revealed by the Most High and the Holy Spirit. Now we call crazy for teaching this though. Like y'all niggas some Christians, y'all believe what? But I mean, hey, if we go through the, if we go through this two witnesses we reading about line by line, feel me, and line it up with each situation it's talking about. When you tell us line by line, how is it possible? It's the northern and southern kingdom. Right. Hi. It gets deeper though as we keep reading. Jabez, you had something in the back. Right? Huh? You said oh, okay. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep it. You got something? I got a question about the death. Is there any truth about people can die prematurely? And so is there a discussion? All right, hold on, hold on. Let's finish this. I come to you. I mean, let's stay on, stay on point. I come right back to you on, on death, all right? All right, come on, Hebrew. That's it for that. That's it for that. Let's go back to Revelation, the 11th chapter. <laughs> I just want to show us the point of the man wants to die in the judgment. Yeah, it says what it says. You know, you can be mad and hope that scripture ain't in there no more. Or decide not to read it. It says what it says. It is what it is. You got something? I gotta go back because you made me wait. The two men mm -hmm. with the with the uh, fire coming out of their mouth had the power from the Lord to change to hold the weather. Change the weather. It says. You read somewhere where they would hold, they would either hold back water or even change the water or something like that. Is that part of the seals being broken? Or even, are those two men the Lord are going to use to break? They have the power to change the water into blood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's part of, you know, like the uh, plagues of Egypt. Okay. You know, remember? they're representing, you know, the, the same plagues that came upon Egypt that comes upon all the fallen nations that ruled over Egypt. I mean, over Israel. Okay. What I wanted to know though is that the seals. What they do, what they're gonna do, is that part of the seals that'll be broken in? Are we gonna be here or are we gonna be gone? No, you you gonna be here. We gonna and then we're blessed to be yeah, alive and to breathe. Yeah. The what seal the mean? seals only opened by the Messiah, the Lamb. That's in Revelation the fifth chapter. Right. The trumpets, the seven trumpets, maybe that's what you're speaking of. I, that's what I was thinking because I, I thought that was going to be like yeah, the, all the seven. Yeah, the seals yeah, and the trumpets are different. Oh, okay. Seven seals are only opened by the Messiah himself. Nobody okay. else can open the seals. That's Revelation the fifth chapter. Okay, because it also says we'll be caught up. So I didn't think that we was going to all be here. I thought we Yeah, but that's, that's, that, that, that's after the seven trump. Okay. That's after the seven trump. Seven trump ain't even sounded on, on what we read. Seven okay. trump sounds in verse 15. Okay. And the seventh angel sounds. That's the trumpet blown. Uh -huh. And then these kingdoms become the kingdom of the Most High. You feel me? So you speaking of like the rapture and all that, caught up, taken away? No, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. You got to endure tribulation. You got to endure to the end to be saved. And you're only being caught up to receive your spiritual body. You understand? And but then the, the Messiah's not staying in the earth. He's coming to earth for the kingdom. That's right. 
You feel me? So you being caught up to be with him to get your spiritual body to be here on earth. You understand? That he's gonna rule the earth and all the kingdoms of the earth. So that's the only reason you're getting caught up to become immortal. You feel me? To be made like unto angels, spiritual power and all that. What Adam and Eve was before they fell. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. Right? You were made to live forever. You wasn't made to die like we all die. You die because of the transgression that went down in the beginning. You understand? So the, the, the catching up has to do with after the last trunk. Set of seven trunks. After the seventh trunk, that happens. You get put, you get spiritual power, glory, honor, and uh, to rule with the Messiah for a thousand years. That's what that's about. There ain't no reward without work. Yeah. You know, ain't no just, oh, I'm gonna get up in the sky and, you know, all my sins forgiven and all. No, you can't <laughs> you know, get work. No, I, work. I, I, mean, I mean, that's just what the church houses teaches our, our people. Oh. And they, they, you know, they get this, this wording, vocabulary, lingo, or caught up right. into, you know, also thinking rapture when you look it up, it's nothing but a, a feeling, an emotion. Okay. okay. The, the ecstasy, like like the drug. Huh? <laughs> right, go ahead, he wrote. Matthew 24 and 29. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation mm -hmm. of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall give her light. Mm -hmm. And if you read on, you'll know that that's when the gathering yeah. starts. Yeah, after tribulation, right? They teach before tribulation. See, that's for all you sinning folk. You won't have to go through all that. No, after tribulation is when the Most High is sending his son to take back rulership of this planet. You understand? Rule and righteous. We're talking about a righteous dictatorship. There ain't gonna be no voting. And you ain't gonna go in the vote for the Messiah and his angels and, and his kingdom. Some democracy, communism, all this out the window. All right? All right, let's finish this Revelation 11 off, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 again. Uh, Verse 8, read 8 again. It's, it's some meat yeah, there. 8 again. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Read that again. And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Hold it right there. They say, ain't this, ain't America, Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually, what we sent back into Egypt? So they stop right there. And then they be like, well, this is, this is about the Israelites. All right? But you, you got to the rest of that verse to finish off. Yeah. The verse ain't over with. What else does it say? Where also our Lord was crucified. Where was the Messiah crucified? So that just ends it off. Right. Jerusalem. Right. So, so how are you still saying this is the northern and south, southern kingdom? The Messiah was crucified in Jerusalem. And if you know about what's going on over in Israel right now, the biggest sodomite parades go on in yes. Israel. Yes. Not in San Francisco, <laughs> Israel. Jerusalem. They have the highest Israel. population yeah. of homosexuality and transgender yeah. on earth. Yeah. Spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, you understand? And then it tell you, it, it, it put the icing on the cake is where the Messiah was crucified at. Now how was the Messiah, the Messiah was not crucified in America. <laughs> I heard the breakdown, you, you know how he was crucified, girl? <laughs> they painted him white. You're like, yeah, good try. <laughs> no, wow. no, you're not going to, that's not crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a a <laughs> that's a doctor. That's a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a doctor. I even heard the breakdowns before. You'd be like, well, that can't be, brother. You feel me? And then the brothers get in the robot mode and call you a, a nigga or something like that. You don't believe what they believe. You're like, man, all right, whatever, man. I'm saying, you can't put that round shape into a square peg. It's not going to fit. It don't fit. You feel me? If it don't fit, you must have quit. Yeah. 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 That's not the truth. <laughs> right? So what we know about the two witnesses, they got the power to shut up heaven, that it'd be no rain during their prophecy. It's raining like a mug all over America. Okay? They in sackcloth prophesying. 
fire issues out their mouth to burn their enemies that try to hurt them or kill them. Right? They turn water to blood. Uh, what else about them? You got all this stuff that, that, that's about the two witnesses, right? That either that's talking about someone that must come back and have a testimony and die, or it's talking about the nation of Israel right now. It's not making sense. It just don't add up. Then, where they gonna die at has to be where Yahshua was crucified. Right. That's the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. Now, you can try to make that be America if you want and say because they painted him as a white boy. <laughs> they, they painted him as a white boy in Spain in 1492. Not her. See? So that's not even that. Ah. Ah. There's more though. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. How do you, how do you, what do you mean? How is this Israel? Laying without being buried for three days? Even if you try to break it down and say a day is a thousand years. Okay, for 3,000 years, ain't none of us been buried. Or the stench. What's the hole smell of? Is it making sense? Yeah, so, I right, so when they see they did, they ain't gonna bury you for three days. Let them niggas stay right there for three days, whoever these two witnesses are, right? Come on, Hebrew. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them mm -hmm. and make merry mm -hmm. and shall send gifts one to another mm -hmm. because these two prophets two who? tormented them. These two who? Because these two prophets uh -huh. tormented them uh -huh. that dwelt upon the earth. Y'all see that? So they ain't be sending gifts to each other. Like, I'm glad he did. Because while they were prophesying, it tormented the nations. It tormented those who were being evil. You feel me? So their message was not a message of diddly do, neighbor, love. It's just a love, no exuberance. It just didn't feel just, you know. No, nah, they was, hey, it was a straight message of warning. You feel me? The Lord on his way, y'all gonna die out for this evil. Right? And they tormented because of the blood. They turned the water into blood. You can't drink no water. Can you imagine? You can't, you can't wash that green for one day. It's over. <laughs> Can you imagine for three and a half years? No water. <laughs> it, it, it ain't raining. The water you got to turn to blood. They plotting on these brothers. They dying. Fire coming out their mouth. All of them. So when they finally died, because it's their time to die, you feel me? They were sending gifts to one another. Like, yes! God! Alright? Because they tormented us with that fiery message of repentance from the Most High. Mm. Come on, Hebrew. 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now, so it's a resurrection. It's a resurrection that happened. They're like, they back alive? I thought we killed them. <laughs> nah, you ain't killed them at all. Come on, Hebrew. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. That shouldn't be that hard to believe. There's plenty of brothers that's been taken into heaven into a cloud or a chariot. Many of them, Elijah, one of them, Messiah, Acts chapter one, right? So same thing will happen to these brothers right here, right? Caught up, all right? Come on, Hebrew. And their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, there was a great earthquake. Beautiful. And the tenth part of the city fell. Mm. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. And the remnant were frightened and gave glory unto the God of heaven. Oof. The second oh, quote. 7,000 men wow. slain. Well, that's a lot of bodies dropping off an earthquake. That's a major earthquake right there. Earthquake over this mountain. Uh. All right, come on, Hebrew. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in the heavens, saying, The kingdoms of the world of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord mm. 
and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's the seventh trump, seventh angel sound. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it says at the last trump. That's when the last trump sounds. The seventh angel sound, that's the last trump. And the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of Messiah. You see? So yeah, there's a translation coming or getting caught up or gathered, but that's after, that's at the last trump. You see? And that's when the last trump sounds. After the two witnesses come and give their testimony. Handle business, you understand? They get resurrected, they get caught up, earthquake happened. 7,000 people died, uh, then the seven things were sign. Bang. So yeah, we gonna win. If you blessed to be breathing, you're going to witness that. You're gonna, you're gonna witness that. <laughs> All right? Everybody get some understanding on that? Understanding? You can get that uh, Enoch in uh, Genesis 6. You wanna go there? Where you? Yeah, you can. Come on, let's go there. Let's go there real quick, show Enoch was translated. That's in Hebrews 11, too. Oh, yeah. Hebrews 11, too. We go to Genesis. Show y'all Enoch was actually. And then we can show Elijah, too, being taken out of it. Okay, so let's go to Genesis first. So they can all have that equipped in there. Yeah. So they can actually go right to it and show them these two were taken up. I hadn't tasted that. That's Genesis 5. Genesis, Genesis 5, uh, 21 and 23. 21 through 23. Genesis 5, 21 through 23, and then we're going to back it up in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. About Enoch being translated. Everybody there? We good? How we look? Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with Yah, after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. Ah, three hundred who? Three hundred sixty and five years. Three sixty-five. Just like the days of your year, huh? Oh, when you get into Enoch, the book Enoch, he was showed the heavens, the celestial bodies, like how everything worked, how the Most High got the stars set up a certain way, the seasons. sun, the moon, the seasons, he was showed the treasure houses. Like every time it rained, there's an angel over a treasure house. Like, look, go ahead over there, open up that treasure house and let out so much rain. Every time it's a lightning, you see a lightning flag, there's an angel over the treasure houses of lightning. Right. He get commanded by the Most High, let out about that much measure of lightning. Right, right. And he, bah! You see it. You feel me? So that book of Enoch, a lot of people are scared of it because they don't understand spiritual matters. You understand? But we're not scared of the book of Enoch. Even in the book of Jude, right before Revelation, it say Enoch prophesied. That's right. So if he's prophesying and you reading it, and where are his prophecies at? In his book. <laughs> you feel me? A lot of people are scared of it. That's another thing. We gonna, we got a video coming. We're going to break down in defense of the book of Enoch and Jasher. A lot of people read certain things in their and they, they don't even investigate the matter deep enough. They just read something and say, see right there, that, that don't make sense. Well, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that you read that don't make sense to your carnal mind. Like a donkey talking. Who heard a donkey talking to them? A woman being pulled out of a man's rib. Y'all still seeing that happen? No, you're not. It's, it's a whole bunch of spiritual things that are happening inside this book right here that in modern time with your carnal mind, you would say, ain't no way in the world that's happening. Hey man, get on down to Barnes, man, just pulled a woman out of old boy's side. You're like, yeah, right. But that's what's in the book, that's what was in the book, ain't it? All right, so it's a lot of things that you have to believe because it's a spiritual book. So when I start picking and choosing, I all of a sudden, it, 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 I don't believe nobody was taller than the gateway arts. That's not my problem, you don't believe that. <laughs> like, I'm supposed to make you believe <laughs> That you know somebody was taller than the Gateway Arch. Well, that, yeah, if you don't believe it, don't believe it. You feel me? You can't force the current. You can beat that current all you want, it's still gonna flow the way it's supposed to flow. <laughs> I can't force a thought or belief. If you don't believe it, that's a problem that you have. You feel me? Even if they show you certain certain uh, uh gi gi ginormous structures that were built before the flood that are still on this earth that they can't even replicate today. A lot of pyramids they can't make. At the Giza pyramids and all them. How them get there? Right. 
I'm talking about the, the Giza pyramids. I ain't talking about just the average little pyramids that you see around Egypt. I'm talking about the three great pyramids. Who built them? They tell you each one of them stones is 20,000 pounds. They're still confused to this day about the mathematics. They was like, in order for somebody to build that in 20 years, they had to place one of them stones every three seconds for 20 years straight. 20,000, and each stone is 20,000 pounds. What equipment was they operating back then? <laughs> like this regular old pulley and oxygen? Just... No, nah, don't, don't, don't fall for it. It's all type of stuff down in South America they discover. Old mech statues and all that. They got, they got, uh, they got steps over there where they say the Tower of Bible was. Man, there's people standing on the steps, but the next step is taller than they head. Like, who them steps was made for? Right. Who was walking on them? They digging bones about the earth, longer than this table. So, I mean, you don't got to believe it. You don't want to, that, that's not our problem. You understand? That's not our problem if you don't believe it. I'm saying, there's scripts in there that show you that we're giants. You know what I'm saying? Now, who are you to put a limit on how tall they were? <laughs> and the tallest person you know is Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> Who problem is that? That's not our problem. That the tall person you done saw is Shaq. It's not our problem. All right, so look, we got that right. Let's go over to Hebrews 11 to show Enoch was translated, all right? Oh, I didn't get that uh, 24. Okay. Uh, verse 24 that uh, Genesis 5. And Enoch walked with Yah, and he was not, for Yah took him. Mm. What does that mean? Somebody will say, well, no, Enoch would never took by the most side. Why is that scripture? What does that mean? Well, he took him and then, and then brought him back to die. Chop in verse and show us. Show us he died a regular death. What's the dude? Hmm? That's his son. Nah, uh, yeah. he was uh, the oldest one to live <coughs> on the face of the earth. However, if you want to be technical, his father is still breathing, so... We want to be technical. Enoch is, is the yeah. oldest. Yeah. Now, that's when you get the saying, boy, you old than Methuselah. And Methuselah was lived to be 969 years. Almost a, a Almost day. day with the most yeah. time. Yeah, so there's no man in recorded history that lived longer than him. Not even Adam, Adam would be 930, I think right. it would. But Methuselah lived to be 969 years. Mm. Feel me? One day with the most high is 1,000 years. So he didn't live to see one day. You understand? But he lived alone. He's yeah. the saying, boy, you older than Methuselah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he was the oldest man on record. Any record. Any record. You feel me? They ain't got nobody living 969 years. All right? So again, that's not, I don't believe that. Who fault is that? That you don't believe it. <laughs> These are personal problems. You feel me? It has nothing to do with the record. All right? Hebrews chapter 11 real quick. I'll do Hebrews 11. All right, let's read one through, uh, like one through six or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one through six. Right. Hebrews 11, one through six. Yeah, it's on. I think it's on YouTube. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1 through 6. This is why I read the Bible in Hebrew. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. This is why we say that he knocking Elijah to witness. <coughs> because they never tasted death. It's a point under man wants to die, then the judge. If they never tasted death, then the two witnesses must be them. You feel me? So they can taste death. Do they have their testimony, taste death, and then, you know, get their glorious uh, portion with the most of them. All right? Let's read this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse Hebrews 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Yes, sir. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm. the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of what? Things not seen. Now y'all crazy. What you mean, evidence of things not seen? What kind of evidence is invisible? Spirit. Hey, that's, that's why a lot of people think your belief is crazy. You feel me? But there's a lot of things that you believe in that you cannot see. Oxygen. Yeah. Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi code. What's the Wi-Fi code? Ain't nobody ever seen Wi-Fi? <laughs> but it exists, don't it? Go in there get that code, boy. I'm online. And there's many other things that you have not seen that you believe. Wind, smack you all beside your face. <laughs> uh, you're like, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so just be, so don't let anybody play on you. Well, see, I don't like that Bible because it's all about faith. Everybody got some type of belief, though. Even the atheists believe in something. It's evolution, but they ain't never seen that. You ain't never seen no monkey morph into a, a man. <laughs> but they believe it. That's their faith. They believe that. You see what I'm saying? Why did they stop? Yeah, <laughs> why did they stop morphing? Why did they stop? I can go right to the city zoo and see <laughs> a whole bunch of monkeys. Then why did they stop morphing? Good question. The first thing you would ask them, right? So let nobody play on your mind and say, I don't deal with that Bible because it's all about faith. Because faith is the evidence of things you can't see. Right? They'd be like, well, that, that, that don't make any sense. Then why do the atheists believe in evolution? Whoever has seen one species change into another? They don't say, well, you know, according to the fossil record, <laughs> the fossil record, uh, fossils made a journal, they, they, the fossils been writing journals and all this stuff. You ain't, the fact of the matter is, you've never seen that happen, but you believe it. Ah, okay. Everything, no matter what it is, in every belief, there's some type of faith attached to it. Any ideology, name it, there's some type of belief attached to it. Darwinism, he had his own belief in things that couldn't be uh, seen. You understand? Same thing, so nobody should be able to play on you and say, well, you, you in that Bible, and I don't deal with that because it got to do with faith. Faith is, it has invisible evidence. Ah, okay, so what else to say, bro? Verse two. Yeah. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Mm. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yah, mm. so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You remember that? Like you can see that sun, right? But you weren't there when it was created? No. Yeah. Ah. Everything that, that, that serves you, you was not there. You was not there when it was created. But you believe it was created, right? Ah, okay, okay, come on. Verse four. Yeah. By faith, Abel offered unto Yah a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, mm -hmm. by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Yah testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaking. Ah, so even his sacrifice, he had full belief in the Most High. Most I accepted it because it was it done full belief. Not like he twisted his arm behind his back and he had a monkey mouth pouting. I don't feel like giving him this. Mm. I don't feel like, well, who is he for me to give him anything? Mm. No, in full belief. That's what my creator required. There it is. And then, so his was accepted. All right, what else to say, bro? Verse five. Yeah. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Ah. Uh. And was not found because Yahweh had translated him. Mm. For before his translation, he had this testimony mm. that he pleased Yahweh. Can you please look up that uh, translation, my brother? Hebrews 11 and 5. So he was translated that he should not see death. Hmm? We read it in Genesis chapter 5. We doubled him back in Hebrews the 11th chapter. Enoch never tasted a physical death. Are we making this up? Did we sneak that in and type that in your Bible while you see? Mandela effect. Uh, the Mandela, <laughs> the Mandela effect. What's going on here? Right? Either this is ink on paper, or you really believe what this is. This says Enoch never tasted death. How do you say otherwise? You really don't believe in what's written. That's all it comes down to. All right. What that translated me, my brother? It's uh, G3346. Met Ata Yemi. Amy. Boy, you getting cold. That green guy. To transpose to things, one of which is put in place of the other. Mm. To transfer. Mm. To who? To transfer. Wow. To change. To who? To change. So he was transferred from this realm to the spiritual realm? Body changed. Go ahead, brother. To transfer oneself or suffer oneself to be transferred. Mm. To go or pass over. Oof. To fall away or desert from one person or thing to another. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah. Now, so basically he was changed. 
And, the, and he's like, well, no, that ain't what that means. The rest of the verse said that he should not see death. But before his translation, he pleased the Most High. Uh, how did he please the Most High? He believed in him and was living by his commands. Before Moses? Yeah, the commandments of the Most High didn't start with Moshe. No, it didn't. That was a reteaching of the commandments. These brothers were in Egypt for 400 years. They had to be retaught the commandments of the Most High. The commandments of the Most High bent in the earth way before Moses was even thought of. And no one knew the difference between clean and unclean animals, did he? When Cain guilty of murder, there's no laws until Moses. So how was Cain guilty of murder? How was Sodom and Gomorrah incinerated for homosexuality before Moses? So the commandments of the Most High were given to the first man and woman, Adam. And it's real, you understand? Oh. Was, they weren't just some prehistoric cave man and woman just Breezing through Grant's form. No, this, this is the, at the image of the most high. You feel me? That's <laughs> what? They're in Grant's form back in the day, buddy. You feel me? This, this is the image of the most high. Son of the most high made in his image. Power. Divine intelligence. You understand? Powers and all that. So the commandments of the most high been in the earth way before Moses. So how do you think Enoch pleased the most high? He believed in him and he was living by his commands and teaching them. And teaching. He says in the days of Enos yeah. that men began to call on the name of the most high. Mm. Mm. All right, read the next verse for me. Hebrews 11 and 6, my brother. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Wow. For he that cometh to Yah must believe that he is, yeah. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see that? You first must believe that he is, comma. First you must believe in him. Then you must believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That don't, that's not part time. That's not something, that, that's not a hobby. That's something you know, to be diligent means constant, continual. All the time, right? You live this. This is not a hobby for you. Like I guess I'm just going to open my Bible day is the Sabbath day. In a season, out of season. Yeah, this is what you do. This is your life, right? The most high is the reward of those that diligently seek Him. All right. Without faith, if you don't believe. You can't please Him. So if you're doing something just because somebody told you to do it, you feel me? But you don't believe. That's not pleasing to the Most High. All right, so we all understand Enoch never tasted death, right? Right. That's why we say he's one of the witnesses. Let's go into Elijah, the first king. Go ahead, bro. This is out of the pseudo Pseudepigraph, uh, third Enoch. Enoch is transformed into fire. Oof. Oof. It's chapter 15 of third Enoch. Yeah. Yeah, he got a spiritual, powerful body. Can you repeat that? It's uh, third Enoch, chapter 15 in the pseudo now you say he transformed into fire, right? Volume 1. Now he tell you in Psalm 104 that his angels are made out of fire. Psalms 104, I'll read this real quick. Psalms 104, verse 4. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flame and fire. That's one manifestation in the, in the spiritual realm. Angels, one of their manifestations, they have bodies of fire. Powerful. They manifest in front of you as men. Remember why sometimes you didn't even know there was an angel. Alright? So Enoch, when he was when he was changed and translated, he got a, a, a spiritual body made out of fire. Whoa! Uh, go ahead, bro. Someone in Hebrew would say our God is consuming fire. Yeah, yeah, our God is consuming Hebrew 12 child. Our God is consuming fire. Wow. Uh, not the two fairy. Uh, okay. Alright, let's get it, Hebrew. Where you at? 3rd Enoch chapter 15, verse 1. Or Ishmael said, the angel of Metatron, <clears throat> prince of the divine presence. That's Enoch, that's one of Enoch names in the heavens. Metatron. Meta means beyond. And are you made out of protrons, neutrons, and electrons? Meta means beyond, so he's beyond the physical. Right, that's one of his names. Matter of fact, ain't that on Transformers? Yeah. 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 Where they got, the way I think they get all this stuff from. <laughs> yeah. 
they, they study these yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was gonna say they they say that Hollywood do that all the time. They, yeah. they throw it in your face, but we just don't know. He saw runs Hollywood. Yeah. He saw no. That's our, you know, that's our physical twin brother, you know. You know, but he used it for wickedness. That's right. Because right. he never he never believed. He was just like Cain. He believed in the doctrine of his father, Satan. Mm. You know, he follows that doctrine. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said at the beginning. Esau. Uh -huh. Esau runs Hollywood. Yeah. Controls the earth. Mm -hmm. Earth is given into the hand of the wicked. <clears throat> Job 9, 24. Esau knows all these scriptures. A lot of those horrible creatures we see in these horror movies. Okay. They know all those things. They, they know the book of Enoch. Yeah. They know about all these old demonic creatures and these spiritual creatures that exist. So a lot of times we think it's just a figment of our imagination or someone's imagination. Yeah. But a lot of times they they peep into the dark side. Yeah. Satan has given these them these portals to, to peep mm. and to seek into the dark side. Mm. And he reveals these things like the fallen angels that come down and talk the ways certain uh, evil doctrines to men yeah. and women how to adorn themselves and things of this nature. So they know these things. Yeah. It's not just a figment of someone's imagination. Okay? These are people who've actually peeped into the dark side, into the dark spiritual realms. Yeah. They put it real close. Metatron and Transformer, he transformed from a person to a truck, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Metatron in here is Enoch transformed. Same thing. Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Put it right before. Another quick question though, like yeah. if you like watching that and entertaining it, is that also, you know what I'm saying? Is that also part of the wickedness? You know what I mean? If you, I mean, if I mean we watch it for entertainment, but also watch for information. Right. right. Don't get overwhelmed by entertainment that you lose you lose sight of information. You know. Watch because they'll make it sweet. Yeah. Like Halloween. You know, that's about to come up, which is one of Satan's ace in the whole days, in which that portal, which we call the arch, is going to release a legion of demons again this year. And we'll see the streets of St. Louis get even more bloody. Okay? And it happens every year. And we send our little children to these organizations and dressed up as demons and and gargoyles and all that. And we put in, we, we, we're sacrificing their spirituality into the dark side. We're entertaining this wickedness. And we think there's nothing wrong with it. We think it's harmless. That's because it hasn't physically hurt you. Right. But it's, it's spiritually damning. That's right. And convicting you. Okay? So we're doing worse than our forefathers. When they said, let the, let the blood of our children's children be upon us, when they sacrificed the, the Messiah. Okay? So we do the same thing. We turn around just for the sake of all. We want them to enjoy and have fun. And, no. Be careful of that. Satan is crafty. Remember, Eve saw the tree that looked, was good for food to be desired. That mean it looked nice. It was lovely. It was satisfying it to the eyes. That's what he does. He makes it look apparent, you know, good and profitable. Right. Until you saw all up in it, you done it. You got any verses on it? I'm sorry? You got a verse like According to, to Eve? Uh, no, I know that it was Eve. I'm saying with the, uh, how Satan will, he'll make it look good for you to get comfortable. Because I just battled with my auntie. She's Jehovah's Witness, and I was showing her that Charles Taze had Russell thing was a pyramid. His tombstone is a pyramid with Masonic symbols on it. Yeah. And she kept going she back. She didn't even know Russell. who he was, did she? No, nah, she didn't. And she was like, you know, well, Jehovah's Witnesses are so pleasing. Have, what wrong have they ever did to you? I said, they ain't never did anything wrong to me, but that, that don't mean that they practicing the truth. Right. I mean, that's just the facts, but I want to be able to give her those same verses. That's so right, she can uh, And when Eve was took of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, and it was desire. It was pleasant to the eyes. One to make one wise. But this was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right. Now see, the righteous trees only knew righteousness. 
I mean, they understood the dark side, but they're, they're, they come, they uh, follow a complete order of righteousness. Never stray into the left or the right. Okay? Only Satan. It's just like you take a, a virgin young woman. Now, according to her righteousness uh, bring, upbringing from her father and mother, she's going to stay that course, righteous course. As soon as she tastes of that fruit, now she debates on whether I go to school or do I play hooky today. <laughs> you understand? Now her eyes are open to both sides. Now she's, she's got a spiritual warfare on her hands. Which do I do? Do I follow the commandments of my father or do I go astray and follow that which is pleasing? To the eye. Okay, uh, put it like this real quick. Satan, Satan transformed himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, also uh, Isaiah 14, where he was Hey, so that's Second Corinthians 11, 13, 15. Second Corinthians first. Yeah, let's hit that one. And then bro, bro got to finish what he was on. Let bro finish reading what he on. We gonna go to Second Corinthians 11 after this. So Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. We grew up hearing everything smiling, ain't good. Yeah, and everything good, good ain't good. smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like where y'all think these sayings come from? You feel me? You go right back to the garden just because it was pleasing to her and it was enticing doesn't mean it's good for you. You feel me? Because it's enticing and it's shining and glittering and smelling good. You feel me? And all your little uh, senses are being aroused. Don't mean that's righteous for you. Right? And to think about it, how the enemy will come. He can't come with a pitchfork and some red pantyhose on. <laughs> smoking, smoking a joint. <laughs> you be like, I'm not stay away from him. What you feel depending on what it is you like. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, gonna, he gonna come looking like Casanova, you know. <laughs> My God. Everything you've been looking for. <coughs> Bro, I'm gonna finish that. I know Sis has something. Ezekiel Yeah, that's what we got. We got on deck. Yeah. Now, right, come on, Ebro. Third book of Enoch, chapter 15. R. Ishmael said, The angel Metatron, prince of the divine presence, the glory of the highest heaven, said to me, When the Holy One, blessed be he, took me to serve the throne of, his, of glory. Mm. The wheels of the chariot and all the knees of the sickena, at once my flesh turned into flame. Mm. So he's not explaining when he was translated, this would happen. Right? His flesh turned into flames. When he was caught up or translated, this is the process of what happened to him. Alright? Come on, Hebrew. My sinews to blazing fire, mm. my bones to juniper coal, mm. my eyelashes to lightning flash, mm. my eyeballs to fiery torches. You see that? Mm. <coughs> He's getting all type of power. Mm. Mm. Come on. The hairs of my head to hot flames, mm. all the limbs to wings of burning fire, mm. and the substance of my body to blazing fire. Mm. On my right, those who cleave flames of fire. On my left, burning brains. Mm. Round about me, Swept winds, tempest, and storm, and the roar of the earthquake upon the earthquake was before and behind me. Mm. So it's going through the process of him being translated. It wasn't like, you know, what you would imagine. Something major happened to him. He was eat, what we call Enoch. <laughs> Given his spiritual power, spiritual body. Talking about his eyelashes and his eyeballs and his sinews and his bones. And in other words, he wasn't mortal. He wasn't mortal anymore, right? Your bones are made out of what they call, what? What your bones are made out of? Marrow. Marrow, yeah. Marrow or something like that? All right, his bones was turned to whatever they was turned to. Your flesh is, you know, you gotta wipe this off every day. You get dirty. It rots, it stinks. His flesh was turned into fire, right? Immortal. Like you see, he made his angels, his ministers of flame and fire. Okay, so it's just adding up. Everything adding up. All right, bro, we're going to go into the scripts on how Satan masquerades as the angel of light. The devil, his heavenly name was Lucifer. All right, when he fell, he became Hashatan, meaning the adversary, Satan, the adversary. All right, when he rebelled, when we say fail, when he rebelled against his father. 
and decided to do what he wanted to do. The ego took over. You feel me? Y'all yeah, know that ego, you can't be told nothing. You know, you play the victim all the time, or you know, you can't be told nothing, you're very proud. And he figured like, look, I'm blinking up in this deal, you know? I'm that big. <laughs> you know, you start thinking you, you know, you really, you that one. And he so he started thinking that. And then he mounted a rebellion against the most high. You feel me? You can read, really read about these rebellions, like in these super pictures and all that different spots. I mean, it's flashes of the description as well. But again, in depth detail about what really went down, you got to get into it. He knocks and all that. All right, so 2 Corinthians 11, uh, I believe it's 13 to 15. One of the brothers, right there. And then we need Ezekiel 28, 12 through 28 to show you when, when the devil himself, when he was made by the Most High, he was made blinging. You feel me? Beautiful angel. You feel me? Until iniquity was found in him. And he chose to go against the Most High. I'll be 14. Okay, well, 12 on down. Let's get her done. Oh, this in the Bible? <laughs> I think Bible study would be so interesting, huh? Oh, it is what it is. This, ain't, this is the book of life for a reason. Right. Right? Every aspect of life, you, bring, you can't bring nothing up in the scripture you don't talk about. Right. Talk about everything. I just want to hear a love story. Read the song of Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> a love story? Read the song of Solomon. <laughs> Y'all in chapters in that deal, you'll be like, this is, I can't believe this is in her. It's all right. Uh, you feel me? Really, you know, Solomon and his, and his woman talking back and forth to each other, you know. You don't want to read about some poetry and just, you know, just love. Right. You know, and it's all what's up. Right. You'll be like, dang, boo, this is going, yeah, it's going down up in her back. <laughs> You want to read about some math or something? Read about how the Ark of the Covenant was made and all the different dimensions and all that. You start getting, okay, what's a furlong? Okay, what's a cubit? You start looking this stuff up. Now you be dealing with math. You want to deal with science? You know how Jacob uh, did some selective breeding with Laban's flocks and his flocks came out strong. He's like, hey, you do they call that selective breeding today? That's, that's deep. Huh? I'm gonna get to different levels of science, quantum mechanics, whatever. It's all in the Bible. They all getting out the Bible when you done talking. You feel me? You just gotta know how to peel back the layers. Right. And you be like, dang, that's in the scripture. <laughs> right? Like, like the birds and the fish all come out of the water. Tell you that in Genesis first chapter. Mm -hmm. Well, science is saying, what did 30 years ago, you know what? Well, all the, the fishes and the birds have their DNA is almost the same. Really? <laughs> really? Well, the one that say the, the, the birds came out the water. Right. Wow. So what's the difference between a wing and a fin? Mm. Huh? Uh, uh, you get deeper though, you know, you, you know. You start hearing certain things, they start admitting finally, you be like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's in the Bible. Y'all just not giving the Bible homage. Pay respect or respect is due. That's the word of the Most High. And it was done thousands of years ago. Y'all just not catching up. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, admitting this stuff. Right? right? Wow, man. But it is what it is. All right, so where we at, bro? Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 and 14. You ready? Get it done. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, mm. deceitful workers, mm. transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Mm. And no more, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Mm. He transformed to who? Into an angel of light. Rip off that. So he don't come looking hideous, he come looking smooth. You know, smelling good. To where you put your guards down. Right? You don't know you in the midst of the devil. Playing around. You feel me? So you're supposed to be listening to what's coming off the lips. Is the doctrine telling you to put aside the commandments of the most high? To entertain your own personal lust. Yeah, that's the devil. No matter how good it smells, no matter how you, you entice, you like, oh, I got probably gonna be fun. Nah, fun, fun wickedness is not fun. That's something we need to get out of our mind. You think being evil and wicked is fun. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's going to get you put into the lake of fire. 
which was made for the devil and his angels. You are angel of the devil? No, so don't you don't be doing stuff that's gonna get you put there. All right, so he transformed into what an angel of light. And remember, the first thing he did when he was asked to according to the commandments of Yah. Yes, yeah, sir. What do you know according to the righteousness of the Most High God? Right. Ain't that the first book of Adam and Eve? Yeah, Genesis, Genesis three. Yeah, Genesis yes. chapter three. Yeah. 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 Goes right into it after the creation, because he was already on earth. He was already cast out. Mm -hmm. So his whole thing was out of jealousy and envy in the first place. Yes. Pride and envy. Mm -hmm. It's because he was mad that Adam had more power than him. Read that verse 15 for me, my brother. Verse 15, yeah. Verse 15, yeah. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, Oof. whose end shall be according to their work. That's something like you talk to your auntie about Jehovah's Witness and all that. There's no great thing if, if Satan is an angel or transforms to an angel of light, his servants do the same thing. You feel me? So, of course, uh, the Jehovah's Witness ain't gonna walk around looking like uh, Anton LaVey, you know, right, black right. fingernail polish and pentagrams everywhere. <laughs> you understand? Right. No, they gonna be coming looking innocent, you know, knocking on doors. Hey, dude. You know? Are you prepared for Jehovah's return? Because if not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's how they gonna come. And that's the whole thing with any false doctrine. They gonna come like that. You know what I'm saying? They gotta come looking like like there's no type of threat let me put my arms down but you always on us we're supposed to listen for what's being spoke right you start hearing things it's like oh no that's against the commandment bro that can't be true israel is always taken by that which is tangible with the naked eye mm -hmm. he wanted a king like the other nations mm -hmm. so we got a crazy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we wanted things, the reason why the law had to be written down for us, we needed something tangible. Because mm. just mere faith alone was enough of Israel. And we still rebelled against that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's get a second witness on this. Uh, Ezekiel 28. 28. 28. Yes, sir. Ezekiel 28. We're going to read verse 11. Turn down. Like 19. And then as I said, I 14, yeah, I just want to uh, bring it all back to who was in that garden, yeah. what happened, the whole shebang, and what, you know, and, uh, you know, the whole setup as to, you know, Satan's transgression. Yeah, yeah. It's not a game. You got folks saying that never happened. Like, no way, he never failed. From heaven. Then, then the Messiah say, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. <laughs> But you saying it never happened. It's Israelites teach all this, y'all. Like, it's not funny, but it's brothers I heard teaching that ain't none of this stuff happened. The devil was the white man. And you like, oh, no, nah, partner, this is this goes way back. Nimrod never was black and everybody in here. And he was beyond evil. This, this is some, this is spiritual we talking about. You feel me? To where when Adam and Eve was created, the war had already kicked off. Why was the adversary in the going? Third attempt. You feel me? Obviously, he wasn't in his glorified. He, obviously, he wasn't. He never. Uh, he didn't stand post where he was. It was a war they was born into. Feel me? This was not meant for vacation. Feel me? They, they were born into a war. But then you start seeing. Okay, but the depths of slick will he go back? <laughs> he goes back. This ain't nothing that just started with Christopher Colombo. This goes back before the garden was even created. That's right. You feel me? Then you start seeing the depths of your enemy for real. Oh, that's the enemy. And how you can peep them is based off what's being spoken. And then the actions behind it. That's the devil. How to try the spirit. Yeah. That's why it's in there. Try the spirit. We, everything. You gotta level up, man. Like, it, it, that doctrine is played out. Like, it's just the white man's the devil. Like, man, I know a whole bunch of black devils. <laughs> I do personally. I know a whole bunch of Negro devils. <laughs> But if you want to be honestly, that was uh, something on the guy that he got verses saying that uh, all they want to say, yeah, that's and they want to say red in any form. He's not yeah. pink or we, we, we've peach. heard, yeah, we've yeah, heard he, it. He, you know, but uh, but if you want to be technical, I mean, if 
you can't say that the white man is a, a <coughs> devil without saying that the black man is the devil first. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if he appeared to all the all our prophets, all our people before, you know, the creation of uh, Esau, then what a, what what color was it? Yeah. And they didn't recognize him as something different. Mm. Then what color was it? He had to be on the color of the of the people. The people. Right. right. It's beyond the flesh, man. It's just time to level up. You feel me? You pose, that's why I say try the spirit. Nimrod was a Kushite. That's an Ethiopian. He was a real rebel. We all know Adam and Eve was made out of the dust of the earth. They were the original parents of the earth. But Cain, so what, what color was Cain? That was the first murderer. Nah, hold on. So he was a white man, too. He was like, oh, right. <laughs> what, about, what about Judas Iscariot that betrayed the Messiah? He was a Hebrew. Grew up with him. Grew came, up with him, right? Came from the same projects. <laughs> what, color? <laughs> what color was he? Yeah, I said, crying. Thank you, this is Ezekiel 28, I. Ezekiel 28. Whoever works wickedness is a son or daughter of the devil. It's not a, it's not a physical thing to tell about it. Whoever works righteousness is a son or daughter of the Most High. It's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? If you follow the works of Cain, you of that wicked one. That's what it is. It's what he did to where you like, that's the son of the devil right there. And you do it all the time. Damien Thorne, y'all know about them old Antichrist movies? You feel me? Or somebody that's just bad as all get out, you be like, boy, that boy is a seed of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Based off what actions. Mm -hmm. Right? Based off what you're doing, deeds. You feel me? Either you a son of the most high or you a son of the devil. Based off what doctrine you're taking heed to. Alright? Alright, Hebrew, let's get it. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11. Yes, sir. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation of, upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord Yah, Thou sealest up the son, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Okay, so you're like, well, this is the, the, the king of Tyrus, right? Perfect. This is right out the gate, king of Tyrus. But what he's saying about the king of Tyrus? What he say about him? He say, "Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty." All right? Let's keep reading. Remember, the tree of knowledge, good and evil. That's right, bro. Verse thirteen: <coughs> Thou hast been in Eden, hmm. the garden of Yahweh. Did I hear that? No, hold on, hold on. There wasn't no king of Tyrus <laughs> in the garden of Eden. You hear about Adam and Eve. So, so either. He talking about somebody else was in the Garden of Eden, named the King of Tyrus, or he's talking about the spirit that's controlling this king right here. Hey, it's time to level up. What are we talking about? The King of Tyrus was in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> nah, but Slick Willie was in there. But <laughs> the spirit, Adam and Eve was in there, right? All right, so thou has been in Eden, the Garden of God. What else? What else say? And understand there was a conversation. Remember, Eve had a conversation with someone outside of Adam. Yeah. She was conversing, conversating with somebody. Mm. Right? Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eve, the garden of Yahweh. Every precious stone was thy covering. Mm. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, mm. the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, mm. the sapphire, the emerald. The carbuncle, carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. I see all that bling bling. That was his cover. So again, the Garden of Eden was not Grant's form. You see all these precious stones was up in there? Recently stones. So yo, yeah, same stones, good point. The same stones that was in the breastplate of the high priest. Right down uh, uh, Exodus 28th chapter. You'll see the breastplate that was made for the high priest, these exact same stones. All right, so this cat wasn't just even no, you know, layman angel, just some average angel. He was a high priest, like a, a, a tad top rank in the heavens. You see, same stone was that went into the breastplate of the high priest. Satan or Lucifer possessed them in the beginning. 
your pipes was created, you may need to sing, you know, sing. what to sing well. Mm -hmm. Like we say, somebody can sing now, they got some pipes, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they blowing. Oh, wow. Nothing new under the sun. Mm. Same stones that you read about the New Jerusalem in Revelation 21. Okay. That's why the New Jerusalem is the Garden of Eden. Let you know, it wasn't just no, you feel me? You even got the dimensions of the streets was so transparent, gold, Perfect. all these stones was up in there. You feel me? This said, what a tree of life. Chapter 22, there was a tree of life. You feel me? The New Jerusalem that we going to is the Garden of Eden that we fell from. We're going back to paradise. Righteous. All right? Now, this guy was up in there. Huh? So he just ain't no, your, your enemy is just not some cat that was born last night. He know all the secrets. He know all the, the spiritual matters. He, he know all of it. He know these scriptures back and forth. He was the life bearer. Yeah. Once. Let's get it. He wrote great. Verse 14. Yeah. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered. That who? That covered. So a cherub is a, is a, a rank of an angel. Cherubims. Remember there was a cherubim but outside the guard, so Adam and Eve couldn't come back in. Go out and treat like sword. Cherub. So now you know what kind of angel he was. He was a cherub. There are cherubims covering the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, look, you was an anointed cherub. Anointed. Huh? That's where you get the word Messiah from. Anointed. So Lucifer had some rank. Right? He was a beautiful angel. Had it going on. And you, and you say, you turned your back on the most high because of what? You had all that going on and you got proud and been on, been on a mission to destroy the most high's creation ever since. Misery love company. You be mad too, you lost all that glory. Yeah, because of pride though, right? So you are the anointed cherub that covereth. What else to say, my brother? And I have set thee so. Mm. Thou was upon the holy mountain of Yahweh. Mm. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Wow, come on. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created mm. till iniquity was found in thee. See, you was perfect until sin was found in thee. You think you talking about the king of Tyrus? With all this bling bling? Now the spirit that's controlling the king of Tyrus was the adversary, right? Tyree and them wasn't, wasn't white people, white folk. Them dark skinned folks. Them Hamites. Tyree and Sidon. Them, them Hamites. You see? So the spirit, so, so whoever's running any kingdom is the spirit of the adversary that's on. Mm -hmm. Alright? That was Satan's seat for the moment. Tyree. Alright? His seat right now, you got him over in the Vatican, right here in America. Wherever you're over in the, the Kremlin of uh, Vladimir Putin. Ain't that his name? Cool. Yeah, that's Satan's seat too. He running all of them. All right, come on, bro. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of Yahweh, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Wow. Verse 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Ah, look at you. You just thought you just was the most, you know what I'm saying, the most beautiful thing the most I ever created. Right. You know how you run across somebody, especially some of these women, you can't tell them nothing. They have been told they was cute one too many times. <laughs> you can't tell them nothing. It's even worse with old slick women, right? You was deceived by your beauty. You thought just because you was made beautiful that you was invincible. Or that you wasn't expendable. No, you could be cast out. You understand? Let's read Hebrew. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Mm. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Yeah, so he's like, you got to get thrown down because of this. You rebelling against the order of the Most High. You understand? Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. That's where pride come in at. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. What else to say, brother? Verse 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Mm. 
Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. Ooh. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them that behold thee. Wow. 19, bro. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Beautiful. Let's go to Isaiah 14, bring it full circle. Show you who that's about. That's about Slick Willie. That's about uh, Satan. You see? And he's a spirit controlling those that rule these empires right here. Remember what he told Messiah? Bow before me, I give you the kingdom of the world. <clears throat> so, if he's telling him, bow before me and I'll give them to you, they must be his to give. Whoever's ruling, and that's why you think you only can go so far, your natural talent only gonna take you so far in Hollywood or whatever. Right? Eventually, you finna have to go to that couch and make a deal. Uh, some type of blood uh, oath. Because those that rule this world, any type of power you lusting for and all that, yeah, you gonna have to make a compromise or a contract with the devil. He was cast to this earth and he got rulership once Adam and Eve went against the Most High. He got them to go against the Most High, he gets rulership. He been running it ever since. But he know he's on a short leash, he's on a short time. And it's over. You understand? The kingdom of this world become the kingdom of the Most High and His Son. That's what it's about. All right? So uh, let's do Isaiah 14 real quick. Then we got to go show Elijah being caught up out of here too. Yeah, first. Isaiah 14, we'll talk about verse 12. Isaiah 14, we'll talk about verse 12. And we call him Slick Willie because his tricks never change. It's just, it's just, it's just your lust. That cause you to fall off. Yeah, he, he, he's basic. He gonna come right to you and be like, what did your God command you? Right? But what do you want to do? <laughs> hmm? They look, they got, a, they got a show called Lucifer. You gotta watch it. Don't be scared to watch this stuff, man. Watch it. So you can know that, you know what I'm saying, the tricks of the adversary. Man, look, he all smooth. Run a nightclub called Lux. They be in the crowd. Yeah. Everybody just loves him. Babies running up to him. Sympathy Lucifer! <laughs> he helping the police solve crimes. Like, <laughs> they ain't gonna get you no good strikes with the most high. That's over for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he always asks him. He always asks him, basically, basically, like, what you, you know what you're supposed to be doing, right? But what do you want? They would say, man, I just want a whole bunch of butt naked women. <laughs> they start confessing, you know, uh huh. Your lust is what makes you go off. You feel me? And all he do is just cater to that. He don't twist your arm behind your back. You feel me? Even the devil's advocate. Yeah. Devil's advocate. Yeah. You tricked me! Uh, he, said, no, he, tricked he said, I don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you feel me? I just set the stage. You feel me? And you choose. Yeah. You choose up. The devil made me do it. You like, look, we lying on Satan. Yeah. <laughs> you lying on the devil like that's so. something. <laughs> the devil made you do something. Every man is deceived when he's drawn away of his own lust. Take it. Yeah. Let's get to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, mm. son of the morning? Mm. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? That's the same thing you read in Ezekiel 28, wasn't it? By him being cast down to the earth, cast out the mountain of God, Right? Which did weaken the nations. Come on. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. Mm -hmm. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahweh. Look at him. Come on. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. See what he say? He said what? For thou hast said in your I will ascend into heaven. Well, that means he must have failed. Huh? He want his position back. <laughs> Right? Y'all into all this, you know, NASA and all that, everybody claim they going to uh, search out space. Y'all remember Star Trek back in the day? Space to what? Final frontier. To boldly go. No man is going before. Whoa! Boldly. Boldly go. Where you going? Where you going there ain't no man been before? Ah, uh, yeah, it sounds like you trying to take the throne of the Most High. 
And not only that, if you notice in the beginning of this, it talks about Babylon. It compares yeah, Lucifer's yeah, spirit yeah. to the king of Babylon, to Babylon. What was the first thing that America did when he called himself stepping on the face of the moon? Yeah. Slam his flag in. He was leaning. Yeah. Ascending above the stars of the most high. Yeah. Placing his nest upon the amongst the stars. The eagle. The eagle is landing. And that's what they said. The eagle is landing. The eagle is landing. So here yeah, you look at this like, oh, he's going to work for NASA. Just so he just, that's, that's, that's an excellent career, son. And you don't even know what the, what's the agenda behind all this. Where is you going? The most I gave you the earth. Where, what you mean you boldly going somewhere that no man ever went before? What is NASA in Hebrew? Yeah, uh, there's two words. To lift up, and the other one means to deceive. To deceive. There's two meanings for it. One means to lift up, the other means to deceive. Where are you boldly going with no man that went before? So to deceive you by lifting up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> where you, where you go? Third doctor. All right, come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Be like who? The Most High. Yeah. So <coughs> Willie is a copycat. He's not original. Everything that he does is not original. He copies it off the Most High that he put his own spin on. You feel me? To where you thinking that he already he ain't original. You feel me? He just show you the flip side of the coin. That's what he showed you. You be like, I bet that's what I want to do. You understand? So he's not original. He's the I will be like the most high. He's a copycat. Mm, what else, brother? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Beautiful. To the sides of the pit. Yeah. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Wow. That did shake kingdom? When he's finally revealed, you can be like, who, him? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this yeah. is <laughs> When he finally revealed you, like, ain't no way in the world I was fooled by yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, he was some big, great monstrosity how, of, with horns and a. He's going to be a little midget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't believe I was fooled by this cloven footed thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like behind the curtain, you saw the real wizard. Yeah. 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 All right, he grow, let's get it. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house, the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the, of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory. L-I-E, is it L-I-E? Lie? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. lie in glory, come on. Mm. Everyone in his own house. That's say all the kings of the nations. So whether it's Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin or we'll pick one. All of them lying. All of them being ran by Slick Willie. You can't name a, a head of state that's righteous. Who? You ain't got none. You can't name some of them that's a right. They, 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 they uphold the commandments of God and just so righteous and just, and everybody lying. Everybody got their power through lying, bloodshed, deceit. Murder. That's how you got your position. That's how you got your power. Yeah? And in the end, when you trace it all the way back up, it's from Satan. It's from the devil. All right, come on, Hebrew. Verse 19. Yeah. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable an abominable branch. Wow. And as the remnant Rain. raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers <laughs> shall never be renewed. Yeah, yeah renowned. Renowned. Yeah. renowned, yeah. So I, that, it is what it is. Those that follow the devil got something coming. Mm -hmm. But you see where he was and what he fell from and the hell he's causing, the havoc he's causing with the nations of men. You see? Uh, 
Luke 10, I believe it was 18, just to show even the Messiah said he was there when he saw him fall. I believe it's 10 and 18, real quick. And then we go show how Elijah himself, he was uh 17, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Luke, Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy saying Lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name the Messiah had a more than 12 disciples he had around 82 disciples 70 plus 12 uh, these 70 actually ended up falling off later on after he dropped some meat on them like some, some, um, uh, some deep truth on them they were like we can't even accept that we out of here that's in John the sixth chapter. And they straight left, like, after they received spiritual power. After they received power from the Holy Spirit, it's like, look, the devil's even in subjection to us. And then you turn your back on the Son of the Mosaic, because he even told you a truth that you need to understand. But based off your rearing up, you couldn't accept it. You understand? He's like, what did he tell them to make them? Because if you think about it, like, how could you turn your back on, especially you got spiritual power, cast out devils? You understand? Healing lepers and raising the dead and doing all type of power and wonders. What did he say to make y'all say, look, I'm out of here. Can't accept that. And you, and you trade spiritual power for what? Nothing. Like what Judas did? You see what I'm saying? That's why his, his punishment is, is going to be so uh, horrific for him. You feel me? Because you traded everlasting power for 30 shekels of silver. The wage of a slave. You feel me? Anytime you start trying to compromise between the spirit and what's corner, you feel me? That's the spirit you operate in. Check yourself. You understand? You don't trade this right here for what? What, some money? I don't care if it's a million dollars. You gonna trade the truth for a million dollars? You understand? You've been compromised at that point. All right? Come on, bro. Verse 18. Yeah. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. <laughs> Come on. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents uh, and scorpions uh, and over the power of the enemy. And over all the power. And over all the power of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You see that? He's like, you know, don't rejoice because you got spiritual power. Rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. Right? That's what that means. Like, that type of visitation that came, you harness that type of power. You understand? What is, the devils are in subject to you. The spirits are in subject to you. You understand? You're working all type of wonders through the power of the Most High gave you, the Holy Spirit and all that. You feel me? How could you turn your back on that? No matter what it is you go through. You feel me? How could you turn your back on that? He said, don't rejoice and never rejoice. Your names are written in, in heaven. Mm. All right, so look, let's show Elijah. He never translated. I mean, he never died as well. Second Kings chapter 2, because the question was about the two witnesses. Right. Back full circle. Two witnesses, right? It's either the northern and southern kingdom of Israel, and which we went through that, the two witnesses got power to shut the heavens up so it ain't raining, right. right? They got power to shoot fire out their mouth, turn water to blood. You understand? They got power to do all this. And when they gonna be killed yet, it's the same city the Messiah was crucified in. So it can't be the southern and northern kingdom on the streets of America reading Deuteronomy 28, finding out they're Israelites. 
just don't make sense. Just don't make sense. All right, let's go there. Second, I think it's Second Kings. Right? Second Kings chapter two. The book of Second Kings chapter two. Start around verse one. Right? One through eleven is uh, when he get took. And this is why we say that the two witnesses are Enoch and Elijah. That's why we say that. Some people say we're crazy for saying it, but you know, based off scriptural research, based off that these men never tasted physical death, who else do you say it is? And how can you prove it biblically? Right? You they'll run the scriptures and say, well, Israel is the most highest witness. Yeah, that says that we are. Right? But this is talking about two witnesses. And it says they're prophets. All of, all of Israel are not prophets. Every Israelite was not a prophet. You see what I'm saying? It was selective prophet men out of Israel that were prophets and prophetess and all that. All the every Israelite that was breathing oxygen was not a prophet. So that in Revelation 11 says these two prophets. Alright? So again, once you start lining this thing up, you're gonna have to, you either gonna have to hold to it's two prophets of the most high that never died. They have to taste physical death. Or this is about the nation of Israel in the last days in America, cussing white folk out. <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, if it, if it is what it is, all you gotta do is prove it. We should be able to read right through the story in Revelation 11 and say, yep, that matched that, yep, that matched that right there, go to YouTube, see that brother right there, yeah, uh-huh, yep, they match. But it don't match. It just don't match. All right, so 2 Kings chapter 2, start at verse 1, my brother. Who got one? Oh, I got And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven into by a whirlwind. Into heaven, huh? Come on. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul lived, I will not leave thee. Mm -hmm. So they went down to Bethel. See, so Elisha, that's, he a prophet too. Mm -hmm. He like Elijah's understood. What they call a little old in the streets today. Like, you know, <laughs> right. a mentor to <laughs> Elisha. You feel me? So he like, look, I'm not leaving you, man. Right, because he understood he was about to get took. And he like, look, I'm, I'm going to witness that. I ain't going to leave you. What you mean stay here? I'm gone. All right, that's the Lord let yeah. Right, let's read. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. <laughs> Close your mouth. Yeah, I know. I got the memo. I'm with him every day. Right. <laughs> All right. Hold your peace. Come on, Hebrew. And Elijah said unto him, Elijah, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. <laughs> so they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Mm -hmm. And they too went on. He's determined. Right. I'm not leaving you, man. No matter where you go, I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> you. Come on, Negro. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on dry ground. Mm. And it came to pass that when they were going over, that Elijah said unto Elijah, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, 
I pray thee that a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. I want to double up, man. Whatever power you possess, I want to double. Right. See that? And then you trip off his mantle, took his mantle off, split the waters, walk on dry ground. Moshe did a similar thing, he put his staff, walk over on dry ground. You say, this, this, this is just, this is comical, this can't happen, right? Until that hurricane swept through Tampa Bay, Florida. Y'all see what happened to that beach down there? The beach vanished. They out there walking where the water was on dry ground. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, people like, nah, that's fake. That can't, well, you got something in modern time. Most I see this, uh, what they call it, what, a hurricane, tsunami, whatever it is. A hurricane down there. Yep. And the beach vanished. <laughs> Took all the water from one, two, two beaches. Yeah. They out there walking, looking perplexed, like, how is this possible? That's the power of the Mosai. Yes, right. All right, so let's not act like, you know, Mosai is so beautiful in this hour. He can be giving you stuff that you don't see on the record. It's happening right in front of you. You feel me? To where all the naysayers of the Bible want to shut their mouth. Because what science explains this? Since when beaches start disappearing? Mm -hmm. No, okay. All right, come on, my brother. Verse 10, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken up from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Mm. And it came to pass, if they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Mm. Y'all see that? So we don't got no scriptures to show that Elijah suffered a physical death or Enoch. <clears throat> All right, so that's why they, they ask us our understanding. We say the two witnesses are Enoch and Elijah, All right? That's, that's our understanding on it. Uh, the only other break I haven't heard was it's Israel. Two witnesses of Israel, but as we read through the story, it didn't line up at all. You, feel me? So you can't force prophecy to be what you want because you, you know you lust for it to be that way. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. And Elijah, he had power to even call fire out of heaven. The uh the Baal prophets, or 450 prophets of his own people, right? When they were dealing with a false god. He, you know, he put it on the line. I thought, let's read that. Let's read that. We get a change. Let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's go. Let's read that story. That's a beautiful story. Wait, brother. What happened to, uh, to the little old? The little old yeah. got power. He, you know, he grabbed his mantle. Mm -hmm. He split the waters. You got the juice now? You got all the juice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really. got all the power now, player. Double the power he had. If you keep reading, you keep reading the Bible story. The spirit was on him so hard that when he died, and then when anybody fell in his grave, they, they was resurrected. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Powerful. Huh? Yeah. Like, what? I've never read this before. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, just, just a lot of things happen spiritually that you can't fathom, with, you know, with the point of mind. <laughs> point of mind. You know, but look, let's read it. First Kings, the 18th chapter. First Kings, chapter 18. It's a beautiful story about Elijah and the, and some of our wicked people. And look, the spiritual wager he put on the line. You feel me? And if you ever got it, you know, did a spiritual <coughs> wager like that, you start saying folks really don't believe what they're talking about anyway. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like these men were doing spiritual wagers. Like, look, if it ain't what it is, then y'all can kill me not. Like, who gonna put it on the line like that? You feel me? If Messiah ain't Messiah, may I be the first to burn. People are like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, you really don't believe it. You're not sure. You unsure about yourself. <laughs> you feel me? So miracles could never happen for you. This brother put it on the line. I was like, look, how long were y'all gonna hop between two opinions? And he was solo bolo when he did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's read this story. Y'all gonna love it. First Kings 18. Went up against all the naysayers of that day. Right. Thought right. he was alone. Hey, did y'all cover Hebrews 9? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Hebrews 9, 27. Bro, speak up, man. We read that at the point of the man wants to die. And then after that, the judgment. 
So we just read about two men in the scriptures that never tasted death. So by process of elimination, we would say the two witnesses would be Enoch and Elijah. You feel me? Not the southern and northern kingdom of Israel. Lazarus, what's up, bro? Hey, now, ain't that, um, Malachi 4 or 5? Is that yeah. Elijah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, so, so look, good, good point. Because I, even in the prophets, they understood Elijah got to come back. They knew it. That's Malachi 4 for us because. Yeah, Malachi 4. Yeah, 4, like 1 through 5, something like that. He said he's going he to send Elijah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before the draft, my brothers read a black. That's why you need your brothers, man. We need to read that before we read this. All right? Five quick verses. Malachi 4, 1 through 5. Malachi 4, 1 through 5. So even the prophets knew, look, Elijah got to return. Feel me? He ain't never die. So even they knew it. So it ain't like, you know, we just being, you know, this is the funnies down here. Like we just, like the prophets knew, like, look, he never died, so he got to come back. You feel me? And Malachi the prophet caught this vision. Now you got John the Baptist in this day, when the Messiah was like, you know, Elijah is John the Baptist, but the prophecy of John the Baptist was that he was going to spirit and power of Elijah. The same fiery spirit that was on John the Baptist, on Elijah, was on John the Baptist. You feel me? But John the Baptist has his own soul. His head was cut off. You feel me? And Elijah has his own soul. So being Elijah never physically tasted death, he must return. Right? They say some Negro out of New York uh, was Elijah uh, because he was at he was at Passover eating grasshoppers uh, back in the sixties and seventies. Oh boy, that's responsible for starting all the schools out there. They call him Abba Bibbins or something like that. Father Bibbins or something like that. They were saying he was Elijah reincarnated because he was eating grasshoppers at the, at the Passover. Well, wouldn't that be John the Baptist? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, wouldn't that be John the Baptist? And, but they say John the Baptist was reincarnated Elijah. And then he, back in 1960, during the Civil Rights era, was uh, Elijah because he was eating grasshoppers. I'm like, that's y'all breakdown on that? Like, that's, that's y'all serious with this? Yes, yeah, you are. Malachi chapter 4. I, Malachi chapter 4. <laughs> Malachi 4, verse 1. Read it. We're not read 1 through 6. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, Oof. and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubbed, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, Yahweh's of old. Mm. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. You know about the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, right? The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. We know that he already destroyed the earth with water, right? Receiving the second coming will be with fire. You see? So Malachi done caught the same vision. Day coming, it'll gonna burn like an oven, right? Mm. Come on, Hebrew. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, mm. and ye shall go forth and shall grow up as calves of the star, and ye shall tread down the wicked. Wow. For they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet Beautiful. in the day that I shall do this, saith Yahweh Zabaoth, Lord of hosts. Come on. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. You see that? So he's like, so who can tell you the commandments done away with? Mm How -hmm. can you say the commandments done away with? And this prophesied about the return of the son of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Right. And which the, the heavens going to pass away with a great noise, elements going to melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. That day going to burn like an oven. You see what I'm saying? You got people saying you ain't got to keep the commandments of the Most High. That should scare you. Like, man, he straight spewing off that satanic doctrine. Yeah. That's going to get me burnt up. <laughs> All right, come on, Hebrew. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in horror for all Israel with statues and judgments. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, Ooh. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see? You see? Elijah must show back up. 
Lord said, I'm going to send them. And this is not talking about Elijah Muhammad. Muhammad's name, Muhammad. <laughs> they ain't talking about him nah. from Sinusville, Georgia. Nah. Boy, brother, could speak, couldn't even speak outside his inside voice. He's like, this can't be the prophet of the Lord. Man, he speaks soft. He, but he, man, if you ever listen to anything he said, he was always whispering almost. Just, you understand? So this is not talking about from Sinusville, Georgia, who founded the Negroes of Islam. This is not him. All right? It's just talking about Elijah the prophet who just read about his call into the world with. All right? Being he never physically tasted death, the Lord must send him back. And that's what we're reading about them two witnesses in Revelation 11 chapter. All right? Let's read it, bro. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Wow. Now see that? So it's in the prophets that Elijah will be sent by the Most High back to the earth. So Elijah is one of the witnesses. Enoch is too, because those men never physically tasted death. You understand? What's going on, sis? You like you have a seizure, bro. How do you, how do you physically bear the Lord's name? He said he's come back to those who bear his name. How do you physically bear his name? What's his name? Yahusha. Hmm? Yeah. So, so, so you're asking how you physically bear or carry his name, right? Right. That's, how, that's what we're talking about? Yeah. All right, so look, we're going to go into scriptures over what the name of the Most High is, and then you'll get a greater understanding over how you carry his name and not more than just because you said Jesus without really meaning it. Right. Or, you know, somebody got the Yahweh or Yahoo tatted on it. Right. Huh? Right. Some people do that. You understand? Mm -hmm. You understand what his name is, and then you can understand how do you carry his name. Right. You understand? So we can we can do that too. That's, a, that's an excellent question. You had something. I can do it. Oh, uh, okay, so you flip it, Joe. Okay. Okay. All right, we have two those on block. I right, so let's go a few of them, what the name, what his name is. We don't argue over names down here. A lot of folks be like, it's Yahweh, it's Yahweh, it's Yahweh, it's Yahweh, it's a Haya, I done heard all of them. It's Yahushua, it's Yahshua, it's Yeshua, it's Yahweh, all of them, right? <laughs> so how do you carry his name? What is his name? Right? What does name mean? Let me ask you that. What does name mean? Love, right? Hmm? Love, right? So your name is Kim? It means love? No. What is the definition of name? <laughs> name. Introduction of person. Hmm? Well, that's, I mean, that, you know, that's a good point. You know? um. But name, name actually has a definition. Right? So once we understand that, then you can start saying, okay, how do you carry that? Can you look that up for me in the, uh, your, your concord, don't I think it's H834. Don't, uh, Name comes from the word, uh, the Hebrew word Shem. 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 Right? He also said Israel and his posterity are called by my name. Israel's name is not Yah or Yahweh. So how is Israel called by the name of the Most High? Right? How does the Most High say, I called you by my name? How our name is not Yah or Yahweh or Yahweh? Name must mean something deeper than what we think. Right, so let's get the definition of name. We're gonna put some of them scriptures right there. And then well, let's see what we land. All right, let's get it done. Name is H8034. Shem, or shame. Name, reputation. Hold on, name who? Reputation. Reputation, uh -huh. fame, glory, as designates, as designation of God. Memorial monument. Memorial? Monument, like you stained your daddy's name. Now how you do that by calling him pops, dad, father? Like how, 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 you, how would you how would you dishonor your father's name by what? By how what would you do to dishonor his name? Be disobedient. 
There you go. There you go. Disrespect. There you go. There you go. Like, say your father left you a business to run. You inherited it, right? You did, you inherited the business. And you destroy all his business contacts. Business go underground in six, in six days. It's over. And they say that woman stained her father's what? Name. Reputation or name. Time name means reputation. Character. Memorial. You feel me? So with that being said, how do you stain the most high's name? By being by, what? By being disrespectful, out of order, <coughs> uh, uh, disobedient, there you go. Uh, not obeying. But which, which means breaking his commandments. Right. When you come down to it. Right. Anytime Israel acts other than what the Most High commanded him to act, you're taking his name in vain. So to wear his name and to be respectful. To be obedient. obedient. Keep your commands. Okay. Walk how he commands you to walk. That's how you carry his name. Right. You feel me? Some people think they got to go get something tattooed on them. Right. You feel me? Or, you know what I'm saying, but yo, hey, why hate on their caps or something? Why they walking around, throw your little cap on? It's, it's way deeper than you know the way he was titled on the most high. You feel me? It's all in action. What are you doing? Right? There's it, plenty of brothers that know, uh, you know, the name of the most high and how it's read in Hebrew. Okay, Hebrew Bible's up there. How it's read in Hebrew and all that. And be wicked as all hell. <laughs> so they're carrying the name or taking his name in vain. You feel me? Others that decide to be obedient and do what he say, that's how you carry his name in righteousness. You feel me? So we're gonna get this real quick. There's a couple scriptures for you. So alright, Psalm 138, you gotta go down. One and two, I believe. Yeah. Psalm 138, one and two, we're gonna go to. Then we're gonna go to Revelation 19. Uh, yeah, okay. There you go. Y'all good. Excellent question. Excellent question. How do you bear or carry his name? Have this front, uh, but Jehovah Witness, they do the same name back. Yeah. These are good scriptures because they believe you can only call him Jehovah. Yeah. 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 You gotta call him Jehovah or something like that. If you ain't saying that, you off. You take the name. Look, these scriptures are way deeper than that. You got brothers that knew every dialect of Hebrew that still decide to bow and eat a bay right. Worship the devil. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Ecclesiastes 5, I think it is a good name, it's better than the old one. You got that Psalm 30 yet? I got it, uh, we got it. We got Psalm 30 yet. Okay, let's do, let's do Psalm 38 first, if you can. One, two. Psalm 38 first, I'm going to go write these scriptures down, sister. Because then, look, you be online, you get into a tug of war about how you pronounce his name. <laughs> That's going on on Facebook too. A lot of people say, no, it's this, it's that. Yeah. I don't even get into them battles. I'll let y'all have that. Let the educated uh, argue over trivial matters. I'm cool. You feel me? And ain't nobody in there dropping these scripts. Like, look, well, hold on. What about this scripture? What about that scripture? You feel me? It ain't got nothing to do with linguistics. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> car, car. Jay's on the fly, he's old. I said, you say beer. I say, I'm going to go get a burp. Now, nah, okay, so we, we, in this, we in this captivity because of linguistics. Yeah. What scripture is that? I ain't read that nowhere. You, you, you said, you pronounced his name in Mississippi dialect. That's why y'all in captivity. I, that ain't no scripture nowhere. You but that people trying to, like, put you in bondage. You feel me? Scare you, like, if you don't say it this way, Feel me? Get down. Taking his name in vain. That ain't what the script going to. Taking his name in vain or profaning his name. Everywhere we look at it, do with action. Everything, everywhere we look, action. This is what you did? Your deeds, Israel? I'm getting at you for that. Alright? Come on, let's get it, Hebrew. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. Verse 1. Yes, sir. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Mm. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy youth, for thy truth. Mm. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You hear that? He magnified the word above all the names. The word. 
right? You saying be obedient, be respectful, and all that. You know what I'm saying? It mean to His word. That's how you carry His name. So every second, every breath of your life, you're carrying the name of the Most High. It's either you being obedient to His word or you being disobedient. So either you're either you being a worthy recipient of what He commanded us, or you're taking His name in vain. Every second, every breath of your life, even in your dreams. Right. Wow, that's scary. Yeah. Huh? Because if you take it in vain, he will not hold you guiltless or innocent if you take his name in vain. Right? I mean, vain is worthless. Right? Like, you, I, don't, I know what he commanded me, but I don't care. Mm. My granddaddy ate it and lived to be 94 years old. Huh? <laughs> My grandmama died during Christmas. Right? I know it was commanded, but I don't care. And you say, God knows my heart. <laughs> and the script says, Man, your heart is wicked. Right. And deceitful above everything. Who can know it? Unless on your heart is the commands of the most out of do's and don'ts. At any moment, you can go left field. You can be off somewhere doing something satanic, a seance or something. Uh -huh. Who, who, who's to stop you? Right. You, ain't, you ain't listening to the do's and don'ts of the most high. Every little thing breeze across that conscience, you're like, ooh, that looks interesting. Right. How about I try that? Mm. You see what I'm saying? So either you carry his name worthily, you bear it worthily, or you're taking it in vain. Every second, every breath, even in your sleep or your life. The word is a bud name. Why? Because the word is his name. Right? You can talk all the dialects you want, but you ain't got his commandments. You ain't no son of his, no daughter of his. You ain't doing what he told you to do. You doing what you want to do, so you're in love with yourself. That's what that come down to. Most of our people are, they ain't love with they sales, man. They don't love the most high. You love certain aspects of him. But then when you read certain things that joy your spirit, you like, oh, no, I, no. I don't know. <laughs> Now, I agreed with the Bible all the way up to, look how you signed it. I agreed with the Bible all the way up to, I read that verse right there. That, look, and then you start thinking, that shouldn't even be in there. Because, because today, uh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, you love yourself. That's all right. right. You don't love the most high. All right, so look, we need a Revelation 19. Now, Revelation 19. What about 11? Uh, yeah. yeah. 11 through 13. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, Revelation sir. chapter 19, verse 11. So we know that the word is magnified above the name. You just read that, all right? There should be no more arguments over how you pronounce his name. Right. What's his name? The word. <laughs> <laughs> Who gonna argue with that? You can't even argue with that. Somebody but, but a stiff-necked Hebrew will argue with you. <laughs> no, no, because yo, they, why, yeah, we understand all the attributes of the Most High, yeah. Yeah, but most people that try to bang dialect, if you wrote some Hebrew up on that board right there, they wouldn't even know it. Right. They wouldn't even know it. Right. You understand? Most people claim they, everybody, all of a sudden, everybody's a professor and a scholar when it comes to the name of the Most High. But if you wrote it in Hebrew characters on any board, they wouldn't even know what you wrote up there. Majority don't even know. Or you arguing over something that you're not even a scholar in. You're not even a jack of that. You're not even a jack of all trades. You're not even a jack. <laughs> you just, you know, the new, the new buck around to find out what day is the Sabbath. You know, you, you all said you were free so overnight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You just want to argue with folk. That's all you want to do. That's a that's a spirit of destruction. Yeah. You know, watch out for all that, man. I ain't getting cool with too. Leave me out of it. All right. We got like Google and scholarship. Google and scholarship. Here we go. Revelation 19. 19 11. Yes, sir. And I saw heaven open, mm. and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. He was called who? Faithful and True. Well, that's another one of his names. Well, well I was going to call him Faithful. Hmm. Faithful and True. Mm. What's the name of your God, Faithful? <laughs> true. <laughs> He's still going to try to argue with you. Right. There's another gender here. You feel me? You start bringing stuff. Why about why we just all call him the faithful? Right. The true. Mm. He still want to argue. Feel mm. I call faithful and true. Come on, Hebrew. Yeah. And in righteousness mm. does he judge and make war. 
His eyes were as a flame of fire. Wow. And on his head were many crimes. Uh -huh. And he had a name written mm -hmm. that no man knew, <laughs> but he himself. Well, we are, you know. He right. get, when he retires, he comes with a name that ain't nobody even said. <laughs> That's pretty much. <laughs> <awesome. laughs> well, we are, you know. You see that? He come with a name that don't nobody know but him. He himself. And we still argue over the dialect in which you choose to say his name. In them silly arguments, man, they don't mean that. Also, the time <laughs> have the pleasure, brother, the uh, spirit of the uh, righteousness dwelling in them. Yeah. We place so much emphasis on the name, they ain't even concentrated on the law, statutes, and judgments. Yeah. Uh, talking about they got a name, though. That one Negro talking about he can't wait to start cutting heat and murdering in the kingdom. We like, what, what? <laughs> you can't wait to shed innocent blood. That's what murder is. So he's saying there's going to be wickedness in the kingdom. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. It's mouth head. Look, he knew he had a demon on. Boy, that boy's lips was white. Oh, boy, that white. <laughs> Spit coming out. Like, boy, that boy got a principality on him, a legion on him. I can't wait to start murdering old niggas. Yeah, like, what you saying that to an old black boy? Yeah. yeah. The old, like the old black boy. Our old sister. Mm. Like, like, video? Yeah. yeah. We was beyond, like, we wanted to go to New York that second. We was gonna check him. <laughs> He's beyond our boy. You feel me? That could have been my granny boy. I, I got some cousins that I wouldn't have been able to calm them down behind it. You feel me? Like, you watch your mouth, man. You be talking to nobody like that. Right. But, but he over there and all his ancient Hebrew got him a garment on school floor. You know what I'm saying? Speak a little Hebrew, write a little Hebrew, and straight to call one of our older Hebrews, which means mother, all out of name. Because she questioned him about what she was like, what about the one scripture? Now y'all come here and ask questions. She had a question for him. And she was like, hold on, some mother here and don't add up. Uh, what about the scripture that say this? What about the scripture that say this? He called her old female dog. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to murder you. I can't wait to murder you. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah, so we're going to turn upon his dog. Boy, but I'm talking about, right. hey, here's some bros like, look, we going to New York tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could check immediately for that. You know what I'm saying? So, just because you can say something in a certain dialect, if you ain't walking with it, you are taking his name in vain. Right? But you know where the road at, but you don't travel the road. You can know you, you can know where it's at, but you don't do it yourself. You don't travel it yourself. You ain't talking about that man. You feel me? So that would be somebody, even though he's speaking the Hebrew, he taking his name in vain. All right, because of how what his actions, what he's doing. All right, let him finish that verse. We come coming right to it. Where he verse thirteen. Yeah. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Yo, sweet Jesus, huh? Mm. Got a vesture on dipped in blood, sweet Jesus. That's the line of Judah right there coming to conquer. You look at you, you like, what? I've never read, yeah. Huh? <laughs> blood, 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 blood of the sinners. Yeah. Blood of the sinners. Remember in Matthew, he said, I come not to, with a sword right now. Yeah, but, with, <coughs> but the next time he comes, he come in with a sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make war. We've already been here to plead with all flesh. Right. We are pleading with the flesh. The word is going forth, pleading with the flesh right now. She like, who's blood? You see Jesus? <laughs> and Jesus returning as a conquering warrior to put down all that opposes his throne. What does a conquering lion look like after he's conquered his, his prey? Mm -hmm. And he's dripping with blood, <laughs> mouth and all, whole head. Mm. She's like, that's not what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, it's, it's, it's all, there's no, just, just no him bringing his kingdom ain't got nothing to do with the funnies. Mm -hmm. You understand? Anybody that opposed that, that's going to be their blood on that on their right. right? Including Oz if we don't get our act together. Mm -hmm. right. You see that? Oz first. So if we, if we ain't trying to be <laughs> on his hit list, we want to be in the book of life. Not his hit list. Right. All right, so we need to start now doing what we supposed to do. You understand? So we can be in the book of life. You already in there, you just working on not getting blotted out. All right, now get blotted out. And how you do that? Walk according to be obedient. Walk according to the word. 
Anybody that opposes that is going down. <laughs> All right? It's crazy. They never talked that church about Jesus. Jesus coming back or pat everybody on the back? Yeah. Did everybody hug and a jolly brother? No. <laughs> no. That ain't what it's going to be. It's time to go to war. All right? Let, let's read it, bro. Read out 16 for me. Read that, read that verse again. <laughs> and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Uh -huh. And his name is called the Word of Yahweh. You hear that? His name is called the Word of Yah or the Word of God. We just read he magnifies his word above all his name, right? Come up with a name nobody knows, but if you want to put a name on it, use the word of God. And the word that was made flesh. So what's his name? Yeah. Word of God. What's his name? We just read right there, Sharif. The Faithful, the truth, <laughs> the word. We just read it. Read, read it again, brother. Read it again what you get. Sure about this. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Yeah. And his name is called the Word of God. What did they just call him right there? The Word of God. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with, the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See what I'm saying? So his name is the Word. We shouldn't even be arguing over that thing. All right, let's show you how the bug get on this garment, though. Read down 16 for me, y'all. Mm -hmm. And the armies which were in heaven followed him Hold upon on. white horses. Let's say, so, so it ain't just him. In the day of the Lord, yeah. there's armies coming with him. Armies. The armies of heaven will be with him. Christ, the Messiah, when he returned to conquer. The armies, God's army will be with him. So you ain't just looking at one power of the most high, you looking at all type of angelic forces with him. What does an army do? An army, an army, uh, you know, passes out Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> 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 uh, an army come to conquer. You feel me? Get down or lay down. That's why it's important to accept the Messiah. You understand? Even in brothers as Hebrews, a lot of them don't even believe in the Messiah. He's like, boy, y'all skating on thin ice. I don't even know what y'all could possibly be reading to make you think this is, you can just do all that and you know, you all good. No, you're not all good. If that's the army that's coming, you need to do everything you need to do to be in good graces. All right, come on, Hebrew, let's get it. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Oof. And out of his mouth goeth the short sword, mm. and with it he should smite all the nations. See, so he got a sword with him. Huh, he, do, he got a sword with him to go to the UN. To be diplomatic. Light up. No, nah, it say to smite the nations. He already came as a lion. He was sacrificed as a lion. Mm -hmm. His return is about him being that lion. You understand? All right, come on, he broke. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's beautiful. And he treaded with the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. You see what a wine press, you know what a wine press is, sister? A wine press, that's an ancient way of how they made wine back in the day. You know, wine is made out of grapes, you feel me? So you would throw all these grapes over in the wine press and then you had people that would stand in the wine press and smash the grapes until the grapes turned, until the grapes turned into juice, you feel me? They flowed into the bottle and they stored it up until it become wine. Feel me? Now, how your clothes are looking? You've been stomping on grapes all day. <laughs> what color? Whatever color the grapes are. So, what color? Red. 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 Yeah, it looked oh, like red. blood was on your on your your garments. Well, I didn't know the grapes were the same color. Yeah, okay. yeah, but that 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 said, he he's showing how he's gonna stomp out the nations. Okay. You feel me? And all those that oppose his throne. Like the ancient wine press, somebody was would use stomp grapes. If that's what they did, if they was in the wine press, by the time they made it home, she'd be like, "Baby, it look like you got who you done killed today? You had all blood. It was like blood was on you. You feel me? So that's why I say he had a vesture dipped in blood. You understand? The wine for anybody that's against the Most High gonna go into his wine press and get stomped out. Whoa, sweet Jesus." Huh? And out of his mouth go the sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. 
and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Mm. Mm. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's it. That's it for that? Yeah. All right, so uh, I know Brett wanted to go to somewhere. You had something you wanted to go to. Go to Ecclesiastes. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7. I go to Ecclesiastes 7 next. Uh, hey, do the same revelation for me, y'all. Right, so let me go to 3 and 12. That's another one about the master. Revelation 3 and 12. <laughs> Sister, I asked about how do you carry the name and bear the name of the Most High? Right? Right. A lot of people argue over linguistics, but as we keep reading, you're going to see me profane his name through our actions. Knowing the Hebrew, wearing our garments and all that, we still bow the knee to the devil. Right? And as we read, we get, we're going to get to Ezekiel and all that. As we read, we're like, hey, that's what, that's what it means to profane his name. Right? You knowing the commands, you knowing what you're supposed to be doing, you still do opposite. See, and especially us, we is covenant people. You are bound to the most high. We're married to him. You understand? So us being married to him, when we decide to go deal with another God, even if you flirting with another God, that's all. That's called spiritual fornication. You see that? It is what it is. And now you're taking his name in vain at this point. Because you know that and you're worshiping another, another power. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, it's the season of the witch. Y'all know at the end of this month, so you, you, most of the, our people gonna dress their babies up like little hobgoblins, <laughs> little crips, little bloods, ninjas, <laughs> fairies. Ain't gonna say what, trick or treat. Right? That's another way you take his name in vain. What are you doing dealing with another god? What are you doing? And the Satanists will tell you exactly that this is the feast of the dead. This is what we do. Right. Right? You run around talking about you love the Lord and trick or treat. But then they look, the pastors know what's wrong now. They say trunk or treat. Come on to church. We're going to dump candy in the, in, in the trunk of the car. Uh, no, you get rid of the entire ritual. Right. It's right. evil. Right. <laughs> Don't participate Another name the church is called Hallelujah Night. Hallelujah Night. What? <laughs> <laughs> of heaven and hell. Yeah. And if you do certain things, they try to make it to these kids where you go to heaven and you go through it. And, I mean, hell and hell is like a haunted house where it's people in all black demons. They, they saying something to the kids. Some of them might grab a kid. And then they'll take you to the other part and say, well, if you should live your life this way, you might go with these people that go up to heaven. And in heaven, they have a display where a guy meets his grandmama who passed away years ago before, and all this other stuff. So they, I mean, this the little hallelujah night is, it still plays a tie to these demons because they, the people in the church actually participate as demons in telling these kids, hey, you do these things, you're gonna go this way, you're gonna do this way. But I mean, it's a, the flip side, they try to be positive, but yet you still participate in acting like a demon. Yeah. I ain't cool with that at all. I mean, look, you look the, the tree of good and evil had to look good in it, didn't you? So just because it got to look good in it, don't mean it's 100% truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? The whole lump. Love it, the whole lump. You got to watch all that, man. Anytime you in the spirit of compromising, right? You're compromising, knowing you ain't supposed to do this, but I'm going to throw my own thing on it and make it as righteous as possible. No, you're going to do away with the whole thing. That's evil. You don't do that. You feel me? You raise your children, not before I take them that and do that. All right? Go ahead, bro. Hey, bro. You know, I'm a firefighter. And, um, every year we have to get the kids candy. Mm -hmm. So I had to uh, end up taking off this, uh, last year. And if, mm -hmm. every year if I have to work. Yeah. And what I did, took off, and um, me and my kids read scripture, and I gave them the history of where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And he tried to impose on them. So end up just taking them. Yeah, yeah. And even if you got children that's in public school or whatever, go out with them teachers and let them know what it is. So, 
a lot of times we all beat all day that my children would miss school. Yeah, straight up. Right. You know, because I mean, a lot of times, you know, we stress about this perfect attendance and everything, but all they are is a number to the school district. Mm -hmm. Right. Just to get fun. Right. Right. They don't care about that as if they heard. They just a number to get that fun. Yeah. Right. So, you know, they're missing those couple of days on them pagan days, they ain't gonna hurt. No, no Nine times out of ten, they ain't learning nothing the whole year anyway. I took mine out the system. I feel you. I had to. I was just on to hit this. Uh, this Ecclesiastes seven and one. It was just one. I mean, you can go on down, but it was just this one uh, script concerning a good name. That's uh, right. And that's it. It's uh, but it all refers back to the ointment of, of the Christ, of the Messiah, the knowledge, the commandments, and statutes and judgments which right. were on the Messiah, like the precious ointment which was laid upon them, preparing them for his death and burial, his resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse one. A good name is better than the precious, than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Wow. See, mm. see how that is your death. Mm. It's better than the day you get birth. The day you die is better than the day you was born. Mm. Uh, wow. If you if you die doing what right. does say of the most high. Right. You understand? That's a memorial. That's something that's eternal. Is that uh, Because of the blessing inheritance coming. Uh, going back to they, I heard that Jehovah's Witness say that's why they don't do birthdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of folks that be on there. And then think about it, the, uh, the little sorcerer hats they put on your head, the lighting candles, yeah. turn the lights out, make a wish, right. and blow it throwing out the candles, you understand? Like all that this paganism got to do with idolatry. But scripture also say this is a day that the Most High has made. We will rejoice and be glad. So it's never wrong for being thankful for life. Right. You feel me? Just leave all the madness out of it. Leave all the candles and cakes. Happy all birthday the with the cones on your head right. and the, the party poppers and the. You get all that from these heathens. Where my prison? You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like you got a bottle, two bottles of Hennessy because it's your birthday. Er, what, being out of and it's a hundred. Uh, uh, it's a hundred other people right. born on your day. So right. it ain't your day. It ain't your day. Right. Feel me? Right. But it's nothing wrong being thankful. Be balanced out. Feel me? You got some folks that don't want to balance out. Thank the most high for another day, let alone another year. And you also have uh, Israelites say that, see, that's the reason why Job's children were murdered or killed and things of this nature. You know, because they were having birthday, they were celebrating their birthdays. But remember, Job was praying per adventure, they forget themselves in their uh, appreciating their that time on earth. If they might get beside themselves and get drunk, yeah. forget the ways of righteousness that he has taught them and things of this nature. That's why Job was praying that they don't get beside themselves while celebrating. Yeah, okay. You know, it wasn't that he was saying, you know, that all oh, they, they being damned because they over there celebrating, you know, and giving, you know, giving praise or whatever. He didn't want them to get beside themselves in that celebration. They start being evil and wicked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bringing pagan Coming elements. To say yeah, that. bringing the pagan elements, the, the cone hats and the, the candles, and let's blow them out and make wishes and all that. Right. Like, who's so, making a wish to? Right. You say make a wish. What, what you mean a wish? Ain't, to, that, a, to a demon, ain't that the bottle or the, uh, what, the genie in the genie, bottle? Genie, <laughs> genie in the bottle. Make a wish. You rub the side of the, yeah, all that's 